to our commissioners, to our staff, and to most importantly our citizens. Thank you for joining us for this work session today. Um, public comment clerk, I believe you said we had one individual signed up, Mr. Larry Pierce, if you could come forward. And the subject matter this morning is Christmas in the corner. Please come forward. Oh boy. Please be aware of your three minute limit and also civility is key. You know, Larry Pierce, 4120 Van Sant Road, Douglasville, Georgia. Good morning, Madam Chair and council people. You know, it's not too often you can act a fool, but uh, I don't know. Sometimes people don't take me very serious anyway. So uh, this shirt I have on is probably about 15 years old, and no, I don't wash it. I wear it twice a year with all these pins on it. But I'm, I'm here today. This is going to be the last time this year. Maybe tomorrow night. There's some good things coming up. But uh, <coughs> there was something that happened at Bible study. And Madam Chair, I'd appreciate if you'd give me just a few minutes, maybe past three. I got some good things to tell you. In Bible study. Uh, in Bible study. Uh, with Joe Fowler, Paul, one of the people in the Bible there, said one night in a vision, do not be afraid, but go on speaking, and do not be silent. Well, the other thing is, the other night I was skimming through the O.J. case. There's not a soul in here that don't know about the O.J. case. Well, this book about Christopher Darden is extremely interesting from his viewpoint and his life. And in it, <coughs> he's very disappointed about the outcome. And I just want y'all to think for a minute what that was about and how it came about. So, in talking about things that are coming to an end, the judge has done things, other people have done things, the investigation has done things, and I'm not sure which way it's going. But I just want to let you know that in the past three months, the coroner's only put herself on call probably about 15 or 20 times, but she's only been out about three or four times. And then other issues that has taken place, signing off on certificates that shouldn't be done, still continues on. Now, in part of the situation that's going on, she went to a hospice facility to pronounce a death on a 93-year-old lady. The law says suspicious or unusual. If my mother had lived to be 93, she'd still be here. But there wouldn't be anything suspicious about in 10 seconds she would fall over. So y'all have got to start thinking about that. And this is not as this case became. This case here became an issue of racism by a famous man of Johnny Cochran. Slick, <coughs> real slick, but you know what he said in the end? He said, I was only doing my job. He did a fantastic job. He turned everybody against what happened. And so y'all have got to start taking. Okay. But you've got to start taking order. Thank you so much, Mr. Pierce. We'll take this matter under advisement. Board of Commissioners are going to move the schedule on our agenda round just a little bit so we can expedite our time today. Uh, approval of the minutes. Please be prepared to approve, uh, review the minutes, and approve accordingly tomorrow. And if you uh, tab number 21, 22, 23, please be prepared to approve our expenses tomorrow as well. Um, I'll pivot back to presentations. We have uh, Mr. Benny Waldorf, how are you doing this morning? <coughs> Please come forward. Your subject matter is gross diet, just update. Now I ask Mr. Waldorf to come and just get forward just a quick update about our gross digest. Thank you so much. <coughs> you have the floor. And Madam Chair said to make it quick, so I said it'd be <laughs> real quick. This is the uh, gross digest. From 2009 to this 
last one is 2019. It's moving on toward uh, 14 billion dollars, 100 percent pay, and uh, in 2020, I it may go as high as 15 billion on the 100 percent value. 5.5 right now in the digest I'm looking at 40 percent value, which is 14.2 uh, or 3 billion. Of course, y'all say, well, we got to worry about the exemptions and all that. I understand that, but. We look more at the big numbers. Y'all worry more about the after they call the exemptions come through. The things are still looking up, the economy's still booming, a lot of houses being built, a lot of vacant lots being purchased. <coughs> uh, as far as appeals, we we're working through our 2019 appeals. We should have all the 2019 appeals work to the uh, to the BOE level by end of January. And uh, Hoping to get assessment notices out by June the 1st. <coughs> That's it. Okay. Things are looking good. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Waldo. Board commissioners, if you look at the trend, leave that up for just a minute, Jessica. If they look at the trend 2009, which was uh, not 10 years ago, there was, we still exceeded that, which the economy, is, the economy was rather healthy. But if you look at 2016, uh, that's the part of it was still down. That's the purple. And then it spiked in 17 and we spiked a little bit. We had a little increase in 18, but in 19, we taken off. Uh, so thank you so much, uh, Mr. Waldrop, for coming in today, uh, presenting. Next, we have the tax commission. Okay, any conditions? Just one question. Did it include the abated amount? Mm -hmm. All the tax abatements that we, you know, they go. They're on the digest, yes. but they're on the exempt digest. That's right. The taxable part of the... Is this just the taxable? That's just taxable. Okay. So it, it does include the amount that we've abated. It, it, it includes the amount that's, at that point, say it's 50% <coughs> okay. taxable, 50% exempt. Okay. It's got the 50% taxable in this number here. Okay. All right, thank you. Any other questions from the board? Uh, yeah, I, I've got a question from a. When was the last time that we uh, assessed all properties across the board? Well, in a sense, we assess every year all properties across the board. Uh, but uh, as far as doing full revaluation, where you physically reviewed all the properties, like us, some counties every three to five years will have a complete physical review. Right. Even calling outside companies like Carroll County did it just a few years back. It took the outside company about two years to go through the process of physically reviewing all the properties, getting all the physical information correct, and then they put new schedules for buildings and land in and did that. That, that we haven't done um, probably since 2002. So, right. The ongoing process of physically reviewing property, <coughs> we try to do this, the lot of life for us to have it done every, every four years, and we do it more like every eight or nine years, to be honest. You know, it's a very slow process. But as far as keeping up with the sales, the neighborhoods, we do that every year. A lot of times that impact 75, 80% of the parcel. So, uh, and our report cards kept by the Department of Audits, which um, has graded us very well every year. We don't, we, we've kept up with the values, but it's an ongoing battle every year. Yeah, and, and, and so to, to that point, um, I'm always about the accuracy, right? I, I know we have, uh, we, we add in, we take out, um, the process that we've shown over the past three years or so. It, it, and again, this gets into probably what we're going to get into a conversation about the need to invest in our infrastructure. And some of that is our technological infrastructure. Um, we, th there's a narrative that you can frame and try to say this is what this really is. But you have to have the data behind it to support that. 
right? So I'm listening, I'm listening very intently to what you're saying. Slightly different conversation than you and I had probably last week. It, it, it seems scripted. It seems prepared. It's like, okay, uh-huh, right? I'm like, okay, now why are they showing this slide? What are you saying? Right? It's like, okay, all right. And I'm okay, but I'm, 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 I'm pushing on just one thing, the accuracy, and I'll lean to my colleague over there who has way more experience than me as relates to that space right now. <coughs> now, I, I, I would yield all day long, but I'm, I'm looking for the accuracy, right? So I'm going to go back to the conversation we had a week ago. Again, it's all about public, no, no, no <coughs> closet conversations. And, and you expressed to me about, because I was trying to get my feel around was the tax commissioner solution going to satisfy the tax assessors? Because we're investing this million dollars. And it's something that Commissioner Mole here at the Emeritus, that we've always had these conversations about that, about the assessment process. And I asked you a question about what we invested in a couple of years ago. Was that sufficient? You said, well, we really didn't invest in a new system. We invested in some mobile devices. And they weren't. We, we bought them, and it didn't work, so we took them off the shelf. Is that accurate? That's exactly 100% accurate. Right. Okay, so stay there. Right, so I'm listening to, like, I just want to get to the truth of what you're looking at, right? And so it's important you ask the right questions to sort of say, okay, now, okay, so, so my question is, in showing me this slide, and showing the public this slide, for all of us to be able to see this, that I, I see the trends, and it's tricking it up. I, I got that. How trustworthy, you know, I'll, I'll yield to my colleague. I, I mean, are we undervalued, overvalued? I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to get, are we valued right? And it, it's always about the valuation, right? Think about some of you guys that are in the, some of you real estate people, they're in appraisal, appraisal game, right? And it's, some, some, sometimes things can be under, undervalued, right? So the question is, how, is, is our values right? If we have antiquated processes and antiquated technology, and you're doing the best you can, and Benny knows it's not about him, this, it, we're fine, this is not him, but I'm, I'm saying how, you know, it's always a plus or minus, how it's like the weather and everything else, plus or minus, how accurate are we? Well, according to the Department of Audits that uh, evaluates this every year, <coughs> the sales ratio of study, we are meeting the requirements of the state. The, the perfect uh, assessment of properties would be a point forty which would exactly match sales. And our overall ratio for all types <coughs> of property was um, 38.25, something like that. It was over 38. And uh, so they say says we're doing fine. Okay. The issue of the, the new technology uh, would not be so good much in terms of the evaluation would be maybe how it would help in terms of the process between our office and the tax commissioner's office in terms of transferring the data. Right now it may take us two or three weeks sometimes to get the digest rolled over because of the way the systems speak with each other. Sometimes they don't speak too well. And that's uh, not to do with the evaluation process as so much as the transmittal process. <coughs> sometimes there is maybe a possibility of duplication that he's concerned about that takes place in a uniform system might help that process. But as far as the appraisal software <coughs> we have, we've used this software from the, based from the state development process since the 90s. Started out as GAP, now it's WinGAP. It's got good support and the digest it's put out has been very, have been approved by the state. So as far as the valuation part, the new technology may not even help that part. It may, I don't know, I'm not sure about how that would work out. We have to, have to try out the new system. But it comes in how you put the information in. As far as we put the information in, the system we've got does a good job. But the concern that we're trying to address that the tax commissioner may speak about, I think he's already talked about it some, has to do with how we transmit our data to his side. And it sometimes holds up, uh, like last year we had to had to roll the digest over, well, I don't know, five, four, five, six times. And maybe if we had uniform technology on both sides from the same company, maybe that would be a faster process and you wouldn't have to wait two or three weeks uh, for the numbers and, and to uh, do uh, millage rates and set budgets and all this kind of thing. 
Right, so, I, and, and that was sufficient. My, my last point then is that I'm going to go a little bit deeper, refine your, refine your, right, so if I'm, I'm looking at, I'm, I'm trying to value real estate, right, and we'll look at the asset by itself, and then there's obviously the assets that are within it, and then there's obviously <coughs> cash flows associated with the company to come up with valuation, and I'm just curious, how, how, you and I have had this conversation probably over the 11 years I've been here, several, every other year he and I have this conversation, like, now how do you calculate that? Do, do you, do we just look at the, 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 the basic value, or do you get into, do we really tax people on the whole value of the company, the cash that it generates? And you and I have had this conversation, and, and it got into the capacity of our, of our technology and our staff to be able to even compute that. In other words, my, my question always is, are we leaving something on the table? Is because I only understand and we're only, the standard is such that, well, that's acceptable to only value based on this. So I'm like, but you don't know how to value a company on cash flow and everything else? And it's not an indictment. It becomes like, and I'm listening, I'm like, okay, but y'all leaving stuff on the table. You leaving stuff on the table. Now, I, those companies and stuff, they got to pay what they pay. But if we don't know how to build them, we, we can't calculate, then I have a problem with that. I have a problem that we're for a system that's 30 years old that doesn't know how to do this yet as part of its modules, right? It's like, really? You know, a, a first year finance major can figure this out. Now, this is not our staff. It's just the fact that there's no expectation for it. And so here we are, and we're going into the final day of our budget. And, I'm, and I keep, and this is something I consist I can finally bring you to a point where y'all can hear me like, uh-huh, you're undervalued. <coughs> I appreciate the slides. Well, okay, that was a perfect setup then. Not my intent, but you, you, you sh you're trying to show a valuation. It's like, yeah, but it's a little soft. It's not as accurate as I would want it to be. And yeah, All you had to do is push two questions into it and realize, oh, okay. So I guess my point being is, is that do you, and I'm going to come back full circle, um, do we believe that the investment we're about to make in the task commissioner as well as that you will benefit by a secondary module, would this help us get a little bit closer to a, a, a more accurate, a, a more crystallized? Not saying that it's wrong with the state, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, does it get to be more clear that I can have more confidence in it? That's all I'm asking. Will it get us there? That I don't know. If you did it, that would certainly be one of your hopes. It would, it would help you do better in the income approach and all that. <coughs> that's fair enough, then. I know. That's you, he's fair, that's fair. Okay. And I wouldn't put you on the spot, that's fine. Okay, Commissioner Carter. So, Benny, one of the things I want to ask you is about your um, appeals. How many appeals did we get this year? Around 2,000, between 2,000 and 2,100. Okay. <coughs> and those appeals, although we do them in the BOA, or you do them in the BOA in, in the meeting, um, some of those will go on to the BOE, correct? 75% of them will. 75% of them. Those that go to the VOE, how favorable uh, are they for us, for the VOA or for the county, percentage-wise? Well, we have a very uh, independent VOE, which is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. uh, they typically will rule 60 to 75 percent with the taxpayers. <coughs> so when they rule with the taxpayer, how long does that BOE <coughs> decision stand for the taxpayer? It will typically stand for three years. It will stand for three years. The majority of those are just based on sales, not based on what you said prior was if we had the opportunity to hire somebody to come in and actually assess the home meaning the gables, the, the everything that goes along with that home to make sure that everybody is on standard. A lot of times those BOE decisions side with the home because we don't necessarily have all the information, <coughs> the best accurate information. <laughs> well, it's not quite that simple, you know. The truth is there are cases when uh, the property owners just have the best data. Mm -hmm. But the other truth is, there's many times when the board equalization is just more sympathetic to the property owner because they don't particularly like uh, maybe our methodology or they don't particularly like what we produce even though we have the best evidence. They're supposed to, by law, decide each case by a preponderance of the evidence. And, uh, but 
they can decide any way they want to, fine. And it's up to the Board of Assessors to appeal it to court if they feel like uh, it's excessive for their cuts. Mm -hmm. And typically their, their cuts are not excessive, maybe 5%, 10%. The board only takes the big ones to court. Mm -hmm. And that's typically commercial cases. Correct. So us maybe taking your advice of having someone to come in and actually reassess our properties could actually help us, uh, would actually help us in the long run, right? Making sure that we're uniform across the board, making sure that the taxpayers know that we are not here to gouge you or excessively um, increase the value of your home that everybody is uniform, that there is equity within the communities, and, um, and that the county is, is doing a, a, a fair job, correct? It could help, but it's a big process. It costs, I think the Carroll County College project was well over a million dollars for them to do that. I didn't get exact price there. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing, the good, the only thing that's really good about that process is <coughs> you do them all at one time, but it does take about a year or two to review it. And the company comes in, it's an outside company. So uh, there can't be any, com there can't be any call oh, that right. we're, we're being biased or we're trying right. to gouge anybody because right. it's an outside company. Right. But uh, it, might not, it might not be that helpful in the long run either in terms of our values have been proven by the state over the years that have been passed. <coughs> so it may help us some, it may not help us some. It's not a surefire winner is what I'm always saying. The staff does a great job, but if you wanted to have a one time every 10 or 15 years where you did that big project and wanted to uh, budget one to two million dollars to do it, that might be a consideration the board would want to look at. Mm -hmm. And so <coughs> I know the staff does a good job because I was on a BOA, so we tried to be as fair as possible to the taxpayer and um, and just stay aligned with what we knew was, was right. But I won't say I believe, but I, I think it's always best <coughs> to have uniform information. I know there are houses on my street that appraise for far less, and then there's one at the top that appraises for far more, but we all look the same. But again, roofing could be different. <coughs> Grade could be different. There are a lot of things that differentiate it. You know, there's a lot of facts. There's a lot of things that differentiate it. And I think, as a taxpayer, I would love to have consistent information on how my home is being appraised. <coughs> but if I think that way, I'm thinking a lot of others probably think the same way as well. I'm but sure there's a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. But thank you, Vinny. Y'all do a great job. I appreciate you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. <coughs> <coughs> okay. Okay. Right. Yeah, wait a <laughs> uh, when the state comes out and does a sales ratio study, they actually take sales that has happened in the past year and compares to what you've got it on the digest. So that's where you get graded. That's, exactly that's how you're you're graded. That's exactly right. And and so you're within the thirty six to forty. Forty percent, uh, and thirty-eight <coughs> is darn good. <laughs> thirty-eight point two five, you said. <coughs> but um, I think where we might be missing um, some funds would be uh, the audits for these big companies like Walmart and places like that. And uh, <coughs> you would have to have staff uh, that is um, geared around that that type accounting in order to do that your um your the state computer system Wingap, does not really uh you depend on them to give us correct figures but oftentimes an audit would go out there and check and see that they're reporting correctly and at one time years ago i think you had somebody but uh you have it takes more than just one person, but when these big companies come and they appeal their taxes, they bring big guns with them. Mm -hmm. They bring the CPAs and the uh, financial attorneys and, the, and people like that that uh, have a lot more expertise in it. But um, it might behoove us to look at an auditor or two auditors 
within your department to go out and um, actually audit some of these big corporations? Um, and I don't know what other counties do. Do you know? I'm they, sure some of the other counties do have staff that does that. Back to that. <clears throat> we have uh, put in our budget ten thousand dollars in some years for outside audit and uh -huh. and that a lot of counties do that. But when you uh, when you have sales in a subdivision and you go you look at what it's sold <coughs> for and then you compare to what you've got it for, don't you kind of update that whole subdivision? We do. Uh, uh, so they they keep it as close. It's no exact science, I don't think, to there this, no. unless you had the one person or uh, the same person go out <clears throat> and do each and every one of the houses because they may see one thing and a, another person would see another thing. A, a appraiser, one appraiser will see one thing, another appraiser will see another thing. There's no exact science to this, but uh, it would, it might behoove us to look into auditors for your uh, corporations. And that would be up to you to recommend that, of course. <coughs> <coughs> that's, a, that's a good thought. Okay. With that, I yield back. Okay, yes. thank you so much, Commissioner. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Mitchell? Yes, just, just a couple. So, so Benny, you, you, you look at short sales, foreclosures, uh, agency sales, or just, or there are particular method to how you kind of get to your real numbers. <coughs> the state requires us to look at all sales so that includes short sales, foreclosures, and as my colleague stated earlier, so when you, when you look at it that way, that's why you would be all over the board. Because as a foreclosure sale uh, that went for pennies on the dollars versus uh, a true sale of somebody's house value could be way different, right? Yeah, let's just look at the, and then one year, you have a lot of bank well, sales. Right. Mm -hmm. Bank sales, yeah. They, they really brought it down. Yeah, yeah. We still look at them, but now we have very few bank sales. We have much truer digest in terms of what's fair market value. But my point, though, you, you use those numbers to get to where you are. It's part of the process, yes. Right, so. right. So, so that's why the numbers could be all over the place. And you, you know, you kind of so you want to say that's a true assessment, but it may or may not be a true assessment because I've always stated, you know, my property is worth less when I'm dealing with taxes. But it's worth a whole lot more, you know, when I'm actually trying to sell it. That's right. We're trying to get your property as a through sale. <coughs> that's why we have a lot of people upset with it. But that's what we're supposed to. Some people come in thinking that the tax value is supposed to be like 75% of the fair market value, some, some concept like that. But it's not. It's supposed to be what you sell the property for. I know. But, but typically but we are a little bit more. who you ask that question to, though. But I, let me let me let me kind of go, go on because I know I'm trying to get through this though. So when you guys go through your real oh my my other question is when you if you go through this process of doing uh, assessment to try to get a true assessment of Douglas County values is that also would be inclusive if you did this would be commercial and uh, res real property or just real property and then you'll look at commercial or that million dollar price tag that you mentioned earlier is that everything meaning real personal and commercial that'd be up to how you design your request but typically be everything everything so that, so commercial will be included everything in terms of real estate okay everything that, that's all right so when was the last time that you did that how long ago that you did that that was inclusive of everything that you can remember, I mean, just a rough estimate. Because, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm really concerned about what you just showed me about the, the gross digest and why these, why are you showing me this? And I'm trying to understand why. But first that question, and then I'll get into the rest of my Well, as far as the overall, when we reviewed all the property with physical inspection and revaluation in terms of schedule changes and all of that, the most uh, in-depth one that's been done to, to my knowledge was one back in 2002. That was the earliest. That was the, the, the last time, the, the biggest in terms of reaching everything. So you paid $2 million roughly? No, it was not. Even that was in-house. 
So it was done in house. I'm not, no, I, I'm not even sure it's ever been done in Douglas County as far as outside yeah, can't okay. come in. That's why I didn't think it ever has been done. Mm -hmm. I, I, just wanted, so. I just wanted to hear it. Though. So, so you've done it in house to say kind of what these assessed values are based on what little help, which is not a lot to kind of have that person because I'm assuming from what I just heard, you don't have the bodies to pull off this this extensive um, uh, true real estate uh, digest as the, the, uh, the assessed values. Because you don't have the person. In terms of the physical reviews, that's correct. What are you talking about physical review? Yes. Okay, okay, so the physical review, you don't have you don't have the true personnel to pull off that. So what you're showing me is what? That if you don't have the, the, the true personnel or the work to pull off something like this, why are you showing me this though? I'm showing you this to show you the trend that things are still going it, it, well it, as far as value is going up. How true is that though? <coughs> Just as true as I understand it. So, so well, they may, you may feel like they should go up more in terms of what the values are. That might be the question. But there's no doubt they're going up, and there's no doubt, according to the state, that we're in line with the values of going up. We're not undervaluing property. But you only in line with the state because of what you give the state. The state doesn't. They pick their sales. Well, they pick up the sales. I agree. They pick up the sales of what was sold. Yes, because that, that's reported to the state. So as to, not that you gave it to the state, but the sales are the sales of what went to the state. That's correct. Period. So, but the true assessed value based on just, I mean, because again, depending on who you ask or answer this question as to what the value of each piece of real estate will vary, depending upon if I'm in the market to sell it or if I'm living there, this is my personal residency, as to what the value of that is, because I, I, I see you guys on a regular about the value of my property. But I won't see you when it's time to sell. But we'll see your sale and where you just sell to. Oh yeah, you'll bring the sale in as to the sale, whatever come in, you know, as to what that is. And, and that'll be a number that the state will receive, as well as you to say, that's the number. So my subdivision is worth that number. Not that in my subdivision that there was a foreclosure or a short sale that sold pennies on the dollars. Not, no, not all the way. Not, 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 not. He's talking right. about what a fee right. appraiser would really do, pretty much. Pretty much, yes. And a fee appraiser is different than what he does. Oh, I agree. Because, and just like she said, if I'm a fee appraiser, which I used to be, her neighbors probably could be more because I'm going inside and seeing yes. what's inside. When so I'm out. upping the values compared yes. to they got tile, they got linoleum and stuff like that. Understood. So basically, a fee appraiser, I, being a fee appraiser, I would <coughs> estimate that value higher yes. than her property because mm -hmm. she, even though I may not have been inside, I'm gonna up that value because I'm trying to get them the value to sell their property. He doesn't do that. No. He doesn't go inside <coughs> and see it. <coughs> Is it based on a, a drive-by and what's sold in the neighborhood right. and what I kind of go by and see. And based on what I see when I drove by there, not what's internally inside the house and what all these other things that may have took the value. You know, I finished my basement out. It's a whole, I mean, it's a whole lot more valuable than those that are not finished. That's uh, correct. Unfinished. Mm -hmm. so, all, all, new, all new construction, we, we do get inside the house because we can go through the whole process from the time. Yes. I went up to the older houses. You know, if we didn't get them when they were built, we have to find out about the doorstep if they finish that basement out. But I'm only talking about trying to, I'm trying to digest your gross digest of what you just pulled up as to what these numbers are and why am I looking at this when you can only give me uh, a non-appraised value <coughs> based off of a non-appraisal appraiser true, you know, who give us a true value to, to really say, are these numbers real or are they just kind of based off kind of what you got, your comparative marketing analysis of what you got based on the sales that you've received, based on the foreclosures, short sales and so on, or the agency sales that you just kind of got off the <coughs> and what you drove by, <coughs> correct? And when you say drive by, we can do what? more than drive by, we go to the property, knock on the door, we measure the house. We're there at the house. We're touching the thing. We're not just driving by. We, okay. we have 
And we interview the, the people at home, we interview them to get the information on the inside if we don't have it properly. Got it. It's an ongoing process. Got it. But you don't have the true personnel that really do an, an extensive, true uh, no. appraisal <coughs> at each home <coughs> that would give you a true assessed value of what the house is really worth, correct? Not the overall where you've had the, where, where people used to say revaluation, it was always, we physically reviewed all the property. We got all the fiscal characteristics up to date, and we got the schedules up to date based on the sales of properties. We haven't had that. No, that's correct. Yeah. And last but not least, so this new software that we're looking at, we're trying to, to get you and the tax commissioners and others all stay all on the same page of transferring data. Do you feel confident that that, that software will, will be a benefit to help with some of this, not, not that this will be uh, Make it hopefully it'll make it better of uh, the transferring of information up to downstairs and to the state. I mean, give me your your, your, your thought on that on that piece of software. Still uh, hopeful about it. Okay. From what the tax commissioners told me, it's possible. But I haven't had a demonstration. I haven't seen how it works. I think Cobb County has got. I'd like to do a lot more research. That's what I'd like to see. Okay, okay. And, I, and, and I'm assuming it looks like we got the tax commission going to jump up here shortly, so I'm going to hold off my other questions and, and thank you, and, and uh, we'll, I'll, I'll yield back. Okay, we're going to move on to the Board of Commissioners. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Wardo. Board of Commissioners, the reason why I had this slide come before you today not only is not to tout or anything about what we're doing in building personal property in terms of our goals digest. It was just to show that there is better, there is further opportunity for improvement. Uh, area photography is something that we have on our list and I thought that would still we have an opportunity I believe it's been uh, 2013 was the last time we had aerial photography and I just learned about the 2002 total uh, comprehensive assessment so it just that was just to bring to you all to show that we still have room for both but still it was just impressive to see what we're still doing without all these resources that we need them and it's not to say that we don't need them. Okay, next we have our tax commissioner, Mr. Greg Baker, and that's going to uh, segue into our next discussion. Okay, I didn't do a slide. I just gave you guys pieces of paper to look at right. ahead of time. Yep. Um, basically, you pretty much know what I'm asking for is software so that the assessor's <laughs> office and my office will be more in sync that will give you uh, better information. Uh, we're not duplicating processes is he types something in I've got it if I type something in he's, he's got it. Um, it doesn't it really have anything to do with valuations I believe it will help in some areas of valuation depends on all the pieces that we get I'm not exactly sure yet but I'm hoping it will uh, my thing was to come up here to just tell you that it's something that's needed it will help with overtime. It will help with uh, Benny and I communicating with each other. It's one software where the, he has one at the state now. I have one with a private vendor. That vendor right now we're paying 40000 in maintenance fees when we get no support. And then we call them and we'll be lucky if we can get an hour's worth of support some days. Some days it takes us five or six days to get answers. I don't think we should be paying $40,000 for a service that we're not getting. Uh, that's just my opinion. I believe we're losing money. Uh, we're not collecting as much interest as we should. It's <coughs> actually, Russ's people, thank you for coming over. By the way, they have been since our last meeting. They have, Stephen has been over. Uh, most of our systems are working now they're not spinning uh we're still losing interest on the old system we're still losing interest so we're losing about two three hundred thousand dollars a year just in interest that we couldn't collect on the old system uh, we have somewhat fixed that uh, we will continue to work with what we have um, but basically this is why we're asking for the new system. Now, I gave you some information on uh, fees that we collect from the tax commissioner's office on the one sheet. And 
And this is not to pick on you, Mrs. Geidner, like you told me the other day, so I'm not going to pick on you. But you got to remember, the tax commissioner office is funded by fees. Most of the fees we collect should be going towards the tax commissioner office to offset your cost to fund my office. And a lot of times we don't get these figures. So what I did is I tried to put together some figures for you to show and this is not all the fees we collect. There's about another $400,000 in fees that I didn't show in here. Uh, I believe the clean air or natural resources one, that's not on here. Jennifer's got a copy of this too. And she can verify the stuff. That's not on here. That's, that's about another 100000 well, 80000 I'm going to be conservative and say $80,000 a year. So that's not on here. But if you see what we collect in fees uh, between both, in 2017, we did about 1869000 just in fees that we collect. And 2018 is a million six. 2019 is a million five. And those fees, and I gave you the sheet. I don't think we gave Mr. Bernard one. I called Mr. Bernard on this Friday. I missed him. But actually, I got Todd Cowan, and he sent me this. And it's... Uh, code 48-5C-1 where fees are supposed to, these fees are supposed to go offset the cost of the tax commissioner office and that's what you use those fees for but my budget has probably never been as much as these fees that I've collected so what I'm looking for is this system to help improve the tax commissioner's office help get you more funds into your coffers and move forward from a system that's been since the 90s. Just as Benny's system has been from the 90s, it's outdated, we need to update it, we need to move on and we need to move the county forward and get correct data uh, for the people of Douglas County. When they come forward to either Benny office or my office, they should be getting the right information. They shouldn't be getting 1990s information. And that's Basically, what I'm here to tell you. I'll take any questions. Okay. More questions, any questions or comments? Uh, yeah, again, this is, I'm, I'm dovetailing back. Again, my, my biggest issue is, is, is accuracy. But the question is not zero sum, that it's totally wrong or totally right. I hope the public listening to this, we're not saying that um, it's all plus or minus, it's a relative. So we're just trying to, it's, it's, it's accuracy. All right, so, so my question is. Again, I'm going back to the valuation because it's not that I want you to collect more. I want you to collect what you're supposed to collect. <coughs> no more, no less. And so it's important that the message doesn't get lost that we're like, no, collect what you're supposed to collect. Right? Part of that, though, is our capacity to be able to calculate how much the value is and you go collect that for us. So I'm, I'm going to come back to Benny. This is just a point of do, There's, do we, do we value things based on cash flow? I'm talking commercial only. When we create, when we do our assessments, is it based on cash flow of all regarding companies, or is it just real personal property? Do you get into that level? The income, we do look at the income approach in terms of the appeal process at this point, we're not to set the value. All right, so only in the appeal. Uh -huh. Okay, that's all I needed. I'm good. Because that, that's material. Right? It's like, okay, so. You do it on a one-off. You do it in an exception. It's like, but why, why wouldn't you be consistent, right? I mean, I mean, if I'm going to buy a company, we we'll probably get to at some point. If I buy a company, I can look at it just based on the, the the assets, or I can look at the cash flow, right? Those are two very, very different numbers. And so I'm, that's why I'm, I'm I'm bringing something to the table. Say, okay, but you know, there's a difference, right? Like when I'm having a conversation with myself. I'm like, okay, but why are they doing it that way? And I understand what we've always done. And that's the way that, well, that they allow that. I'm like, that make it the most optimal, though. But, oh, okay. And that's all I, I'm saying. I'm coming from a totally different place that says, okay, y'all leaving an awful lot on the table. I'm back, and I'm listening to it now. I've got this, that commercial. Like, it's not about residential. So to my citizens, it ain't, I'm looking at that commercial. Like, y'all leaving an awful lot on the table. And you only do it when somebody comes and they're appealing, then you want to go through it, you get it out. Like, why don't you, why isn't your system doing it always? Why doesn't the system do it? Why do you even have to get your pencil out and do it in an exception manner, in an appeal? Why doesn't it do it 
Did you say uniformity? Across the board. Right. And so you don't have to answer it. It's more rhetorical. We're, we're, we're getting our minds around something else. It's okay. Uh, but you go answer my question. I yield. I'm good. Thank you. Okay. I'm good. Commissioner Biden. Yes, I, I'm a little confused uh, with the conversation, the way it's going. Does your this <coughs> million dollar software package, does it include his appraisal part? Yes. I mean, it's going to appraise property. It's going to help Benny with that process yet. It's going to help Benny. He's coming off a wind gap. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> Did you know that? <laughs> yeah, we've, I mean, a possibility. yeah, we've talked about it. So uh, it's going to take the place of wind gap. Yeah. <coughs> the system that you're buying is both his appraisal and, and your collection. Correct. Hey, we keep saying a million dollars. It's not a million dollars. Right. Well, it's nine hundred and seventy-six. No, no. It's thousand, more like so eight. Hurt near. <laughs> it's more like eight. I hope so. Uh -huh. <laughs> but um, I, I was confused whether or not because the way he was talking a while ago, it didn't seem like it was going to affect. He was his saying he was saying the valuations. He was That's talking about I'm the valuation. His appraisal part. <laughs> Well, it, it's going to probably help him with his evaluation, but it's not going to go out and do the evaluation. But they, they're still going to have to. Yeah, they're going to have to key it in. <clears throat> into wind gap or this system? In the, the new system. In the new system. Right. Or he's going to still use wind gap and just read it over to the system. Now, he's going to get rid of wind gap at some point. Good. Okay. I did not know that because I knew that uh, the state furnishes wind gap. Yes. And I was not clear whether or not it included actually his appraisal right. department. His, he will totally get rid of Wing Gap after the, it takes about 16 months okay. to convert everything. But it's all under oh, this yes. software package that you're buying? Yes. Okay. I just need clarification. <laughs> it is. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, we're, and Betty and I, we're scheduled pretty soon to go to Cobb. We're going to hit Cobb and... I think DeKalb to make sure it does everything that we want it to do, which I'm 90% sure because I've already looked at it. Benny's going to, we're going to take a trip down, we're going to look at it, we're going to talk to the appraisal department again over there also. So we're going to do a thorough, thorough evaluation. But it is a system that most of the counties and tax commissioners are going to when we go to our conventions. Um, this is the direction that they're going. Most of the counties are getting big or as big as we are. So they have to update their systems because, as you know, wind has been around since you've been around. Uh, well, and that's that, not that bad, but the, it's just a older system. That was after 2000. Yeah. But we, we, had, we bought the system. I mean, they gave us the system. Right. And then we added modules to it uh, right. because we were taking partial payments at the time. But that system at the time was the state of the art. Right. And we actually, when they keyed in changes of address down there, we opened a door every day, rolled it over into our system, so we didn't have to key what they had keyed. So it, it worked at one time, but I don't know. I know Stan the Man. Well, Stan's I dealt no with, longer there. <laughs> when Stan the Man left, it went down. Right. <coughs> so we, we have to stand no longer there and it doesn't roll over and do the things it used to do in the past. So we're well, we, we did a lot of things that the other counties weren't doing, like taking the partial payments and actually dispersing the money at, right there. But, um, and so they wrote modules for us. And then all the other counties wanted the same thing. So. And, the other, <laughs> and the other thing I say, we already have a piece of Tyler technology in the county anyway, so we will be working with <coughs> Russ and his staff to make sure that what we already have with Tyler Technology, any other <coughs> final discounts and stuff. So we're, we're, just, we're not staying right at the price you keep saying. We're going we're gonna to do a whole bunch of negotiate. This is the price they gave us, and we got to go with that right now because our budgets are coming up. But we're going to be doing a whole bunch of more negotiations. Today. Okay. So. All right. I get back. Okay. Thank you, um, Commissioner Mitchell. Uh, Greg, um, 
I think this software you see uh, that will help you guys with the state and everything else. You're looking for more efficiency versus yes. versus what it will bring in. Because I don't think it, you, you help me, if, if you answer, I'm going to ask it for you, but will it bring, are we anticipating it's going to bring in any more uh, taxes that you already have, or should we look for more efficiency as to what you're doing with you and Benny that, that deals with the state and so on? Well, we're looking for both, to be okay. honest with you, because <coughs> like Commissioner Robinson said, we want to be accurate mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with everybody in the county. We don't want to leave anybody out. We don't want to overvalue, undervalue properties. Mm -hmm. We want to be more efficient, and we want to make sure we got true values and we're capturing everybody. Yes. Right now, I can't tell you if we're capturing everybody, right. but our goal is to capture everybody. Right. And I know that's Benny's goal. And the Benny's defense, he's been up here a couple of years and asked for people, and he got denied. And he can't do his job with a short staff. So I got, I got to advocate for him a little bit. Is, and I always say this, and how Benny goes is how the county goes. He's out there with the digest mm -hmm. collecting that money. He's out there with his people and if you look at it, 58% of the income for the county <coughs> comes between Benny and myself. He's got to have the staff to get out there and do that. Mm -hmm. we, just, we just, in my department, collected, I'm not going to tell you the amount of money yet because I haven't got it and Jennifer will beat me up because then you guys will come back and say, oh, we got this much. We just did an a, a extensive <coughs> sale of mobile homes. <coughs> Mobile homes hadn't been done for a while. Mm -hmm. When we started, we had uh, 200 mobile homes that we were going to sell. By the time the sell date ran, came around, we had five. Everybody came in and paid on their mobile home properties. That mm -hmm. Some of them haven't paid since 2000, and I think 15 or 12. They actually found mobile homes on properties uh, that were way back in the woods. I don't know how, know how they got back up in there, but they did. Um, but some of those properties hadn't been looked at in a while. No, and no offense to Benny now, but they just didn't <coughs> have it. We, I mean, we went way back in the woods and people have mobile homes back there that haven't been looked at in a long time. But again, we can't do it. And those are the things we want to have a system for it that'll tell us where those mobile homes are, who owns them. A lot of them were in parks where uh, they had been sold, and parks collected and rent on them. One of them actually belonged to the county. Uh, and we, couldn't, we can't tax the county, but the mobile home park was getting rent for it. Uh, but we figured out a way to get around that and charge the mobile home park too. But all those things will try to help him and I with the new system. So, so just going back to my initial question, though, so efficiency is a part of yes. to include um, how much more with the possibility of you able to bring in. Yes. Okay. Well stated. How are you? Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Baker. It's Hello. very obvious that the system is needed in terms of accuracy and efficiency yes. and also to make us better. And it sounds like Wingate Gate is a dinosaur, so we're going to move, uh, we'd love to move into the 21st century and the system seems like it'll help us get there. Board of Commissioners, I would like to just listen to some of the statements from both Benny and the, the Tax Commissioner. It sounds like we could bring all the resources in the world, but it sounds like we're lacking staffing. And that would be a conversation that I would like to have as soon as possible. It sounds like we need to put some boots on the ground to make sure that we uh, identify those properties that are out there. Um, I don't know if that's something we're willing to talk about or entertain uh, a little later, but we need, it sounds like we got to put something on that tax assessor side to help these properties. Thank you so much. Uh, Ms. Okay, could I say one? Yes, question? you may. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> only reservation I got about the whole process is I haven't seen this offer. I'd like to be able to see it to know if it's going to work. And then it, Gregory uh, 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 he said we're going to go see Cobb County. So, uh, I like the process, but it just seems sort of rushed from my side of the coin. We do bring that for so long, go to a new system, I hadn't even seen it. And so I, I like to be a little cautionary about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Just put that thought in there. Yes. 
Well, even if, if you're apprehensive about the system when you see it, it's still we, the Board of Commissioners are just allocating dollars. It may be something better. We're not sure, but we just want to make sure that that funding is there. We appropriate the dollars. That sounds good. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. All right, we're going to, uh, I have one thing, a, a minor adjustment, uh, Board of Commissioners, we have Sonia Compton here, our uh, Solicitor General, and she's a little pressed for time. I want to get her in uh, for our SPLOS update. Thank you. <coughs> Solicitor Compton. She's coming around. Oh, she's coming around. Yeah, this is on uh, number four. So I'm yeah, tab number four. Tomorrow. Yeah, tab number four to consider amending the Douglas County Code of Ordinances by creating a new chapter, 15 offenses and miscellaneous provisions <coughs> disorderly conduct. Our Solicitor General, how are you doing this morning? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I hope everyone has had an opportunity to read over the proposed ordinance. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And so uh, we're submitting it. Oh. I was I talked to the sheriff the other day. He hasn't seen the final version of it, so I don't guess we've seen it. This was Friday that I saw him. The, the, this has been so circulated. He had not seen it. Huh? This has been circulated. What does that mean? You, you it's been circulated by to everybody, so, law enforcement, DA, sol well, solicitor general. State court judge, magistrate court judge. But the sheriff has seen this version of it. Yes. Okay. This this version is the one that three weeks ago y'all put to to advertise. So it's been out at least three plus weeks because it's been advertised. We missed a week, I think, right, Lisa? And it was it's once a week for two weeks successive. So y'all approved this one a month ago mm -hmm. to go be advertised. And this is the version that was presented then. That's not what I was told by the sheriff, so I, I don't know yeah. what to say. Well, I can tell you the <laughs> sheriff actually met with Sonny because I ran into him at the courthouse when this was on the agenda for the publication. Sonny, did you talk to the sheriff about this version? Yes, as I said last time I was here. <laughs> right. I'm just quoting what he said. <laughs> I'm just saying what I said. <laughs> okay. Any questions from the board? Or? Yeah. I mean, okay. Yeah, but, but this, this is a, a legislative process, right? <coughs> right? So we're real careful about you know, what he, what's really being said. Um, I, I'm hoping that all stakeholders that are involved are paying attention. You know, we, we're always sensitive about whose role is who and what they do. This is legislation that's being passed. It's an ordinance, right? We properly gave notice to everybody that need to be notified. Uh, I, I don't want there to be suggestion that in some kind of way somebody got left out. Right? Legislation is something that has to be a public policy, public debate. We notified the public and obviously we, we had the hearing um, and now we'll, we had to open this and now we're gonna obviously go forward. Right, so that, that that's no, no side snick, no, no, this has been open. Right? And, and, and this is important, it's something that We've all weighed in on probably from different perspectives, but this has been a very clean legislation. I mean, this is the commissioners. We're, we're this, this is what we do, mm -hmm. right? So th there's no the public who may be hearing this, and if, and if the suggestion there was a pause that, okay, somebody didn't like, okay, we, I mean, if I miss something, that's on me. No pun intended. It doesn't mean that I'm not <coughs> responsible for something that's been a public policy debate. So I don't want to slight that the sheriff would not have known about this. I think that would be unfair. Right, I, I think that we, as Douglas County, have done a, a pretty good, accurate job of, 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 like, everybody weigh in, right? But it's time to make a decision. You can't kick the can, we can't pause, we can't, like, it's time to move forward with this. I think it's necessary. I think it's been thoughtful. I, I've seen how this list has gone around, gotten people involved. I mean, I've met, I mean, so, it, it, just to suggest all of a sudden that somebody hadn't seen the latest version, it's like, okay, y'all got command of how many people, right? I mean, I mean, as an individual, I get it, but maybe that's not his actual individual role. So I don't want to suggest that he missed something either in all of this. I mean, you have people who are on staff that we pay good money to make, just like Congress and the General Assembly and everybody else, like, okay, well, the system should ensure that the people know what's going on. And again, I just when I hear stuff like, no, this, this has been duly and properly done. So I just want to acknowledge the, 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 the suggestion that 
all of a sudden somebody didn't see it and we didn't talk, like, come on guys, this is a system. This is a process. Follow the process, it'll work its way out. I yield Okay, thank you so much, John. Uh, Vice Chair. Mitchell, your hand was up first. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so, so, uh, uh, do not use first on him. Let me ask our, our legal. Legal, you had a chance to kind of review, uh, come up with, or add to, change, cross the T's and not the I's, correct? Um, yeah, uh, I have, and, and I would say um, I will personally call the sheriff and verify before tomorrow okay. that he has seen this version. Right. But I think that everybody that's been included, included judges, uh, state court judges. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've talked to Sheriff personally about it several times. I've talked to Chief Connor several okay. times about it. But I will make sure that this version has been read by the Sheriff. Right. Uh, and I've had meetings with the Sheriff and Sonia as well. So, Bobby, Bobby yeah. you, you haven't got any other comments on that, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Y'all have looked at it? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, good. Yeah. good. But, so, and, 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 uh, Sonia, would you kind of speak to kind of the short version? Of what this is, if you would. It's a it's an ordinance, okay. um, and the ordinance is called disorderly conduct. Mm -hmm. And what it does, it addresses um, several incidences, um, um, like possession of alcohol, um, mm -hmm. like someone who's we call public drunkenness, mm -hmm. uh, disorderly conduct by being disruptive. Mm -hmm. And what it does, and also marijuana. And what it does, it allows us to reduce those from a state code to a county ordinance. Mm -hmm. um, however, under this ordinance, they're still required to pay a fine. Mm -hmm. They still can be placed on probation for up to six months. Mm -hmm. The only benefit for a defendant in this is that it will not be on their criminal history. Yeah. But the punishment is almost, exact, almost the same, except we can only go six months probation as opposed to 12. Mm -hmm. But the fine, the maximum fine of $1,000 is still in place. Got it. That way, the reason we included the marijuana is because right now we're not able to test it to prove that the substance is in fact marijuana. So what this will allow a defendant to do is plea out, resolve the case, we can close our case, and we can move on. Mm -hmm. And there's still consequences for the actions. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. I just want to make sure that for the, for the public record that they can kind of hear <laughs> what this was all about and why. And um, and from your knowledge, uh, not like I'm putting you on the witness stand to say who who's received this or not, but from your knowledge, those that needed to receive this have received this. Absolutely, yes. Okay. And, and you've done your due diligence in trying to at least communicate with, with those who need to hear this. Yes. Okay. I yield back. Okay, thank and, you. And so not like some counties. Some okay. counties are just not prosecuting these cases. They're just throwing the stuff away. Got We're it. not going to do that here. Uh -huh. But we don't want to. Oh. And that is why uh, we came up with this proposal. Understood. Okay. Okay. I yield back. I'm done. Thank you. So much. Um, Mr. I, Biden. I apologize to you, but I was just telling you what someone, it came from the horse's mouth. Okay. <laughs> and he, accepted. he was in, indicating he had not seen the latest version. He still had some problems with it. So <clears> that was my, I was just repeating that. Okay. Um, and I told him he needed to be at the meeting if he did have problems with it. Right. And um, well, Bobby so. Bobby is We were playing Bobby. I'm just quiet and sitting over here. But if uh, you have a state law and then you have a county ordinance, what's the difference in the, the two? Uh, <coughs> choose to go with the county ordinance instead of the state law? I don't know how that would work. Okay, well, let me try to explain it to you. Right now, when it comes to marijuana, you have to prove the THC level in the marijuana. You understand that part, right? Mm -hmm. Well, right now, we do not have, in Douglas County, the equipment to prove that a substance, a plant, is actually marijuana. We cannot test the THC level. So even though we know it's marijuana, we can't prove it legally in court. So some counties are just dismissing it because they cannot prove it. So what we've come up with is an alternative because we cannot prove it on the state level. So we're giving a defendant the opportunity to say, well, hey, now you know it's marijuana, Mr. Defendant, you know it. We can't prove it. 
So instead of leaving your case open until whenever we can get to it, eventually, maybe, we're giving you the opportunity to plead guilty, accept responsibility, and resolve your case. What if he says, you proved it? I'm like, okay, well, just get in line and wait. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> just get in line and wait. We will sit here, and if, when the state comes up with something, we'll prosecute you at that time. But right now, you have an opportunity to resolve your case. But if, if they say it's up to you to prove that this is marijuana, what, what does the defendant do? They go to court? Well, right now we can't go to court. They, their, their file will just remain in our office until some, at such times that the legislature can resolve this issue. Okay, so if they, if they have um, any quantity at all or, or on, possess, on their possession, uh, you have to prove that that dust or that <laughs> uh, bag of stuff is marijuana, right? To prosecute them. Could you? I'm, I'm sorry, if, I got lost. Say they have a bag. I don't know anything about marijuana. Okay? A bag of what? If they have a bag of something that looks like marijuana, but they say it's oregano. <laughs> Cookie. <Okay? laughs> <laughs> and but how are you going? You're saying you can't prosecute them if, if it's under a certain amount uh, <coughs> until the testing can be done. I can't prove it under state law. That is correct. But I know that there's been talk there. They're looking for a way to to prove you know, uh, that it is marijuana versus anything else. And well, no, that they have a way. The equipment is two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and I don't know if the county wants to buy it. What if they do? No. Well, I know, <laughs> but uh, to prove it. Well, just to tell the difference between what it, marijuana, whatever. So uh, if they come up with a system to prove it, so the people are going to have the choice of going to the lesser fine or just signing an affidavit saying they take the responsibility of it rather than being prosecuted under state law. I have a problem with circumventing state law on something like this. And, I, I, uh, may, may I address something? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of counties have what you call public drunkenness. You, you've heard of that. People out in the public and they're drunk and intoxicated. There's a state law for public drunkenness, and a lot of counties have ordinance for public drunkenness as well. They have both. Okay. So the person, they can be prosecuted under state law. They can also be prosecuted under the county ordinance for the same thing. It's, it's identical. So what counties have done this that you're doing? Henry, I know, does it. Um, I think Cobb is not prosecuting. I think Cherokee, but I'm not absolutely certain. <coughs> I know Gwinnett is not prosecuting any marijuana. In fact, they're just throwing it away. But did you copy this ordinance from another county, I guess? What I'm asking. I, I didn't copy, uh, no, I did not copy this ordinance from another county. Okay, but this in no way is the first step to legalizing marijuana. I can't legalize it. Well, if you're not going to prosecute them, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> well, we are prosecuting But this isn't uh, a step in that direction. That's what you think? Of legalizing marijuana. Is, is that your question? Uh huh. No. Okay. She right. says in the actual ordinance, and puts a footnote next to marijuana, specifically the following. Um, this ordinance is not intended to in any manner decriminalize the possession of marijuana. So what, and Sonia, if I can add to what you've just said. So right now, if you're a lawyer and you've got a client charged with marijuana, you can wait until that state test done or they change the law and get prosecuted by <coughs> state law and then lose your license and get a criminal conviction goes into history or you can dispose of the case we get the revenue off the, the fine and there's punishment but there's a window for uh i can't think of the right word but rehabilitation that means we've not killed your your permanent record and so the options with the, the person, if they want to go to court, they can still go to court. They don't have to take this. This just gives her another uh, set of, gives the Solicitor General another set of options to dispose of cases so they're just not sitting indefinitely. 
Because what happens a lot of times with these kind of cases, and Solicitor General knows this, people change their life in a matter of time before they ever get to court. Two or three years later, it's not the same person that was doing whatever they were doing at, at Mr. Mina Court, and this gives them an option to get, get them on the road to rehabilitation, which the whole system, the whole rewrite of the Justice Code by Governor Deal was intended to move towards this, is, uh, is giving people second chances. But in this case, what it is is clearing her docket so they're just not sitting there. If we let them sit there, she's not going to be able to trial them in a year because they're just going to load up. There's only so many, there's only two state court judges right now. So, so uh, these people will not be going <coughs> referred to, say they have more than one case. And uh, they keep coming back with the same thing, and they're just uh, discarding it by paying a fine. But they keep on. They're not put in a DUI court or misdemeanor court. Uh, so I just wonder, are we addressing the problem? Or are we just kicking the can down the road, allowing it to get worse? I, I'm going to refer to Sonia about the options, but right now the option is a dead docket of a file essentially with no revenue and no no start of anything there's still consequences to this disposition and ordinance uh, there won't be any implication just thrown out but if they if they choose the county ordinance just to pay the fine then they, there's no record so what what happens to the next time that they're arrested for the same thing or the next time well, is there a limit? <laughs> well, no, I don't know that. I, you know, you, you can't ex post facto punish somebody based on the past on misdemeanor court. But, and Sonia, if I overstep, please jump in. But, but here's the issue the prosecutor and law enforcement can always see an arrest record. If it's been some period of time, that arrest record shows up so they know they're dealing with a repeat offender. Uh, but usually, if someone's going to be a repeat offender, it escalates and one of the reasons why we sent this to the DA's office is because under the rule of lenity which says if there is a lower level punishment you have to impose that is to make sure we were not messing up in any way felonies felony quantities felony other drugs felony charges and I've got an email from Brian Lunder when they reviewed it from that standpoint I also went to the judges just to make sure and one of the things that Tim was concerned about Sheriff uh, Pounds originally was I don't want to lose my felonies and we made sure of that so there's still the felony option is still there but I'm, I'm just going to tell you all something misdemeanor people typically don't go to jail for very long it's misdemeanor the whole intent is some punishment at some level and i'm assuming that we send people to jail but if you go to jail for 12 months you're out in six typically on good time because if it's county time that's what you're getting so there, there shouldn't be a false premise that all these misdemeanor people are going to jail because they're really not going to jail. The fact of the matter is what's going to jail is felony prosecutions typically. Now that does not mean that somebody that commits a felony crime doesn't go to jail, but it's not like prison. They're going to county jails and staying for a period of time. And they're, they're on your dime. They, and then they're coming out and they're back in society. Well, it doesn't mess up the misdemeanor. I mean the felonies. Will it mess up other misdemeanor cases? Well, this is written very carefully to track the state disorderly conduct code uh, and make sure that the only, we didn't want to, and when, when Son and I first met, and, and Ms. Dawson, we first met, they didn't come with a package of we want to make more things criminal. They came with a package of simplification, but we need to move these cases and have options. So this is geared more towards that. We didn't open up the bucket. If you go to the city of Atlanta and look at their ordinance code, uh, they probably got a, a, a couple hundred things that are disorderly conduct charges, multiple pages. That's not what this is intended to be. Okay, I yield back. Okay, thank you so much. All right. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to believe this because obviously we're going to finish this publicly tomorrow. I mean, obviously it's what's not being stated here. Uh, Ms. Alicia, I, I appreciate your effort on and trying to find a path <coughs> forward. You know, uh, we talk about circumventing, um, you know, uh, state law. I mean, we look at a lot of our processes internally, how we work around what the state said we should do, um, and, and we do otherwise. So, it, it, you know, I'm, I'm careful about choices. This is, yeah, you got to take a position on this. Right. 
And that's what this becomes. Take a position, right? I appreciate what's being, what, what's being created here. Uh, I, I think it's time to, to move us forward. It's been very calculated quite well, right? Everybody can see themselves in it or not see themselves in it, right? It's trying to address something that has needed to address in this kind of quite some time, right? So it's like, let it play out publicly. Let us have a debate tomorrow and be done with this. But we won't sell it at this at a work session and stuff. But uh, let <coughs> go, um, be prepared. I yield them to you. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, Solicitor <coughs> Council. We appreciate all the work you've done. Can I just suggest one thing, uh, Madam Chair? Mm -hmm. uh, and Sandra, with the one comment that I meant to include in this is uh, it's been recommended that it have an effective date. It obviously can't be, can't go retroactive. So the only question for this board, if it moves forward, would be <coughs> is the effective date uh, upon approval tomorrow, or is it effective date January 1 or June? I think uh, Madam Solicitor may want it effective <coughs> as soon as possible. Is that right? Yeah, uh, tomorrow, if it's voted yeah. on. On the so, that it's so if, if that were the board's choice, we would, if the board would allow me, I'm going to put effective <coughs> and put tomorrow's date for purposes of y'all's consideration. That way, when it's on the agenda, you know the effective date of when it would go forward because the whole intent is to get them now, not wait. Okay. But it, that was pointed out by one of the judges. That's fine. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Lord, I'm going to try to sneak a few in before I call for the squad. they pretty self-explanatory and hopefully mm -hmm. won't generate a lot of discussion. Tab number five is authorization to approve an MOU with happy Tails Pet Therapy to provide qualified teams for animal assisted activity, read, and a pet program at the Lithia Springs Public Library and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Linda Moore. Hi. Um, this is in line with several other contracts that we already have with other organizations, Caring Paws, Reading with Rover, Reading Paws. Um, what this program does is it brings in certified training, um, certified um, therapy dogs and allows children to come in and read with them. Um, they usually sign up in advance and get about 30 minute blocks. Um, we have these at all of our libraries um, through various different, um, different organizations. Um, and this helps children to, who might be nervous about reading in front of adults. Um, the dogs are nice and they don't <laughs> criticize their reading abilities. So um, this gives children uh, more confidence in their reading abilities. So, and it's, it's a really nice program. Thank you. Any questions for the board? Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Tab number six, authorization to approve change order number seven with the Motorola Solutions for the Public Safety P-25 radio system and the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, a couple of commission meetings ago, I came uh, with change orders five and six. We should have had seven on there as well, but we were hoping we would have the tower and fair play built. Uh, and wouldn't have to do this, but uh, we're still waiting on the final approval from the FCC to get that tower built. Mm -hmm. So what change order number seven does is change the final acceptance date to April 30th of 2020 instead of earlier like it was supposed to be. So there is no uh, monetary change, it's just a uh, date change. Okay. Thank you, any questions from the board? Right. We'll move on to the next one. Authorization to approve. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Authorization to approve a contract at AT&T for the AT&T Viper E911 ready, uh, I'm sorry, E911 telephone system for the backup E911 center and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Whitaker. <coughs> yes, ma'am. Thank you. This item was in our uh, 2019 budget. <coughs> Excuse me. We've been working back and forth with <coughs> AT&T on the contract and we finally have the contract back for AT&T. This is to uh, upgrade our uh, backup knowledge center from the old the Lifeline Positron system to the new AT&T Viper system that mirrors the one in the current 9 center. Um, uh, AT&T is no longer going to maintain or um, uh, carry parts for the old system. This, as I said, this was in our budget. We've got the contract back from AT&T pending legal review. We'd like to move forward with it as soon as we can. Okay, thank you. Any questions from the board? <coughs> Thank you so much. Uh, Director Whitaker, and last but not least, we'll try number eight. Authorization to accept a donation for Keep Georgia Beautiful slash Georgia Power in the amount of $475 for uh, Keep Douglas Beautiful and amend the budget. Um, Director Stanley. 
Good morning, commissioners. Mm -hmm. um, this was originally a $500 donation from Georgia Power. However, Georgia Power cannot um, give money directly to a government, so it would have to go through a 501c3 or 501c6. Um, we are not set up that way, so Keep Georgia Beautiful will act as a pass-through for any of the Keep Georgia Beautiful affiliates. So they take a 5% fee, so that's why you see $475 um, listed. But um, So it, it's, a, it's actually a donation from Keep Georgia Power to help with some beautification projects around the county. Okay. Any questions from the board? All right. Thank you so much. At this time, we will um, segue into the small subject. Mr. Terry Gable, you please come forward. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Good morning. My name is Terry Gable with Moreland Alphabella, and I'll be doing, doing the uh, supply stuff update for December. And I want to sort of say happy holidays to everyone else in the room before we get started. Uh, so um, this will be an update through November as far as work and invoice, uh, invoices going out, and it'll be I'll be reporting on the October, reven uh, October revenues. Uh, and I've uh, so you try to shorten the presentation some about. I'll only be presenting on those projects that actually had a change. If you'd happen not to see one in, in the presentation, if you got a question about it, please let me know, and I'll I'll, I'll address it too. So with that, we'll move into it. So um, through November, we've invoiced uh, approximately thirty-three point nine million dollars, right? Thirty-four million dollars. Uh, the biggest part of that was a, a payment to Motorola as we're finishing up that. Uh, the radio system, we're making the last few payments to Motorola, obviously keeping a retainage um, for them to complete that, uh, that big project. Uh, revenues, again, are look, coming in pretty stable. October looked, uh, looked good. Hopefully we'll get a trend up as we move towards the end of the calendar year. We were at $2.19 million. Uh, the original projection was just, again, was just a little, a little over $2 million. Um, so, the looking at just year three, we still have an overage. We're uh, tracking an overage at 1.4 million dollars when you compare the total revenues and the projections. And just looking at it from a graph standpoint, again, it's just staying above that uh, the solid line, uh, which we've done very well this year. Uh, we want to continue that. And hopefully, we'll trend up some going in toward the end of the last year. And looking at the overall. Uh, SPLOS program with $65.06 million total. Uh, if you compare that to the projections, uh, we're right at $2.6 million for our overage for the whole, for the whole program. And with that, I'll move into uh, a few of the project updates. As the, the Chief just said, um, of course, everybody is, uh, is we're waiting on the letter from the FCC uh, to get into the hands of uh, Motorola so they can complete that tower uh, and at South Douglas. Everything is done there basically, but it's going to take about two weeks to finish it. They were hoping they could get it done uh, before the end of the calendar year, but as that letter lingers, uh, we're probably looking at that work being done uh, the first part of two, uh, 2020. Um, testing is ongoing and everything is checked out so far from the testing that TUS has done with Motorola and the chief staff and, and the, the sheriff's department, everything's checking out with the towers that they can check. Obviously, with that one tower in South Douglas not being available, it does tie in with a couple other towers, so they can't do a complete test of the system. <coughs> um, we're there. We just got to get that. Uh, got to get the letter. And, and Motorola is is, is d uh, done a lot of work to get it to this point, and we're looking forward to, it, to getting that uh, one tower completed. Uh, the final test, as we said, will be at, uh, will be in the spring uh, when the leaves are on the trees to get a, a true reading. Um, I've got the ambulance on here because it, uh, the chief did take delivery of that uh, this week, so the ambulance uh, is on board now and, and will be put, I'm sure, is already being put into service. So with that, no, no further updates in fire right now, so we'll with that, I'll move into transportation. Uh, the resurfacing program and LMIG program for 2019 is completed. 
uh, C.W. Matthews did get all the work done. Uh, the only thing remaining is the striping, that they'll do that uh, as soon as weather permitting, they can get back out. So that's good news um, and getting all the resurfacing done by the end of the year, which is their, their contract time. And we'll close that project out. And um, Miguel is working on uh, our list for uh, 2020, uh, El Meg and, and the SPLOS program. Sweetwater Church Road at Doris Road. This is the one that we've had let uh, have a contractor on board. We were just waiting on a notice to proceed uh, for the contractor. Is uh, Prime? No. So I need the contractor. Mm -hmm. I lost, lost my train of thought there. So, but we've got a notice to proceed with the contractor now, and we're looking forward to him starting work any day now. Obviously, the weather's permitting, um, and get that project started and get it wrapped up. This in 2020. Highway 5 at Douglas Boulevard, glad to say that we've got, um, Michael Baker was the approved uh, on-call consultant. Miguel was able to get uh, a, a price in for the task order. We have that approved now, and we're looking forward to getting them started with uh, the design on the right turn lane there on Highway 5 at Douglas Boulevard. And it'll st that'll start the process, and that'll start getting some important information that Miguel needs as we move down the path of that project and, and looking towards the right of the way and what it's going to take to, to get that project built. The Highway 92 uh, at Mount Vernon traffic signal. Uh, really no change here. GDOT does have a contractor on the board. We're just waiting on them to get started. Um, as, as the contractor moves closer to it, I think materials are going to be a, a critical there, obviously, with it just being a signal. Uh, if, there's, if there's a delay in getting started, that'll be it, or if any conflicts with utilities. Um, but we are looking forward to getting that signal, getting, him, getting that work started and getting the signal in place there at that, uh, at that intersection. Highway 92 <coughs> at Riverside Parkway. Again, this is in the, the design stage. Pond Company was awarded the project. Um, Miguel was able to get the, the price and the task order um, put together. It was approved this past month and we're looking looking forward to getting that one started getting a scope developed and moving forward with that project next year maximum road uh sidewalk this is the one i'll start reporting on um it's been, previously it's been the three sidewalk projects at lithia springs chestnut and, and new manchester high this is one that's on the uh, the SPLOS list. Uh, Miguel did go. We Miguel did decide to go ahead and, and use one of the on-call consultants for that. Low Engineers was awarded the project. Task score has been approved, and we look forward to getting them started with the design uh, for the Maxim Road sidewalk. Uh, this project will tie into the intersection project that's already left uh, there at um, it's yes. Uh, State Route, that's State Route 6, I guess that's what I was. Yeah. State Route 6 and Maxim Road, which is the uh, project we partnered with with GDOT. Uh, this project will extend it up to the Cobb County line, just the sidewalk. And with that, we will we'll move into Parks and Rec. Um, so we've got uh, integrated construction was awarded the bid for the for the tennis courts. Uh, the contracts have been mailed. We're waiting on to get to get those back and issue a notice to proceed uh, for the contractor. I'm sure weather permitting, they'll get started as soon as they can. And obviously, it'll be 2020. Um, we're looking forward to getting the contractor started and getting those tennis courts on the way and getting them completed next year. And the same thing with the, the, the multi-purpose rec center. Uh, this was let also with the, uh, with the tennis course as well as the senior center. Uh, Ray Lynn out of Carroll County was awarded the bid. The contracts have been mailed. And we're looking to get the notice to proceed any day. Uh, and we'll get, get that contract officially started and get everything underway. Uh, start, uh, start construction on the rec center. Um, I know everyone's excited to see that one get started. Um, and we'll move forward with that once we get uh, get him on board. And then lastly in parks, 
uh, as far as contracts being led, Headley Construction was awarded the uh, the senior center project. And the end contracts have been mailed, and we need a notice to proceed to get them started. Uh, and we'll have those uh, have them get started first of January, and uh, we'll look forward to getting that one underway. And and I was telling the commissioners earlier where we'll plan a um, a kickoff of these projects, a groundbreaking for all three of these, and. David Good will be working with Rick and, of course, the board and getting some schedules set up uh, to do that for all three of these projects uh, in the first part of 2020. So with that, as a short version, I'll, um, I'll open it up for any questions that the board may have. Okay. Any questions from the board or comments? <clears throat> Quiet. Okay. No, no questions. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Uh, this, this, uh, Mr. Good, do you have anything for us? Good regarding, uh, I think. He doesn't have a presentation, but he may have a few comments. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> the only thing that I really have to say is that a lot of people are really interested in what we're bringing in 2020. Uh, they've heard both about the budget and they've also heard about the projects coming on. So I've you know, been able to talk to people, talk to businesses, and that's really where they are now, is just excited about it. And then they also want to see what type of economic development is going to come around some of these projects. Because I've been told that some were like, hey, you know, this project is here, but where are eateries, you know, where can we go for different places? So that's really what's pushing now, is we really want to see what can be built alongside of all of these plus projects. And then the intersection, they're really happy about how a five they know that something's going on. So that it's ready for it to be there. And that's about it. Okay. Any I mean, questions, questions for me? Vice Chairman Robinson, I believe you Yeah, I mean, but you, 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 you are going to pro um, provide a year in report for the section of the SPLOS that you normally do. Or we'll yes. get it maybe next month. And it's okay if you don't have it today. But I, I just wanted to acknowledge, right, there's a lot that's going on in the county, right? It's exciting. You finally got some verticals that are going up finally. And I, I, all I call is Miguel constantly off horizontal, and I forgot that. You know, we finally got verticals going up. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, it's a good thing. Um, you know, I'm, I'm encouraged to see Ray Lynn, um, a firm that traditionally has um, uh, fed at other jurisdictions here in town, got a, a nice bid here in, in the county. And, and I, I like to see, right, everybody has an opportunity, right? right. I appreciate the processes that we put in place with this business enterprises. I, I like that. Our staff is becoming a little bit more deliberate in our evaluations and things that we do. There's a consistency. So I, I think that as I acknowledge the outside, I'm also excited about the inside saying, okay, it's lining up, that it is what the public expects, right? There's this consistency and uniformity. So I appreciate this, this, this dialogue because, again, while they see it, sometimes you got to know how it's done. And I, I think that out of authenticity and, and integrity, you would be able to say, no, it, it is what it really is, um, that it's not manufactured, right? So this is important. I appreciate, um, obviously, this conversation and what we're doing. Um, because sometimes the public, you know, while they're excited about things going up, it's like, okay, but who benefiting from it? Right. Where's the money going? Follow the money, right? Who's consistently eating? Who, who finally gets their chance, right? So it's one of those where it's not a either or, it's both. We have a very rich... Um, 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 obviously um, environment and I, I think going into next year it's important that we embrace uh, this the diversity that's here um, and all that we do a lot of different companies do a lot of different things and to my last comment is my, it's my understanding that there has been a change of guard uh, with Moreland and, and so this is more of a legal um, as well as administrative Madam Chair did I would and I'm, I'm segwaying but like with anything there's always evolution Moreland, who has been um, a, a mainstay, I love Moreland, I, 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 Mr. Moreland, no problem. Um, it's been a mainstay. They've been acquired, is my understanding that it's formally, all right. So with that, that has an impact, okay, so where my contract off, and what does that mean for this floss? And it's more, it's not our staff, it's not David or Terry's issues, but uh, Madam Chair and the County Administrator, all, all the board collectively needs to know, okay, so what happened? Uh, are there any conflicts anywhere else? And not that it's a bad thing. I just want to know, okay, who this big company is that was uh, that went through uh, an aggregation of other companies. And it's like, okay, so who got taken out? This is engineering, so it looks like there was a consolidation. 
Okay, so that means that now it's going to get less competitive in certain areas. Well, I know there may be some, like, okay, well, Douglas Tiny, I'm going to like, okay, look at the consolidation that's happening. Uh, we, we need to know what that is. So um, some kind of way we, we need to understand what the impact on this contract was. Um, however y'all choose to go about doing it, I don't care, but the full board needs to know what it meant for us. Because again, you've been, this company has been, the Moreland Russell relationship is driving a $4 million deal. And all of a sudden, it's been change of owners. And we were just informed today. Okay, so somebody owes us a, okay, now what just happened? That's too much money. <coughs> And we need to understand what happened, where, where, where is it going? So, okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Gates, could you speak to that? Or well, yes, and, and um, I believe Atlas is going to come. We'll, uh, I will get, I'll go back and get with um, the, uh, the Buddy Grattan and Vicki Moreland and commissioners, we have talked to the commissioners previously. And we'll, we'll present a formal presentation to the board. Mm -hmm. uh, as soon as I can mm -hmm. line that schedule up, we'll do that in January. And go through it in detail and give the board an opportunity to ask questions, uh, concerns that they may have. But I thought it was a very good idea, and we'll, we'll I'll set that up and, and get it on the board schedule for January, February, as soon as I can do it. Okay. I believe our uh, purchasing director has a comment too. Uh, more than Alta Billy has provided to us their um, request uh, for their fees for next year, uh, and they're consistent with the approved contract through the six years. Uh, they are asking for a 2% uh, increase uh, based on the, um, what's the standard? It's not cost of living, but it's on one of the other financial <coughs> measures. And that's gonna be presented to the Transportation Committee uh, for their review to, before they bring it back to the board. But we do have their request to continue the contract under the Moral and Alphabet name based on the agreed upon fees in the existing contract. Okay. Good. That's good to know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Based on what his, his comment. Uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, but, but to that point, I, I have no problem. It's been a change of hands, guys. Right, change of ownership. So in one conversation, you're like, okay, I want my fees to keep going, but the other hand, somebody else owns us. And we're just now being made aware. And I have no problem with letting the system go. It's just, just to the public. And this is what I'm, I'm only here for the public to make sure I see. I, I look into and oversee the system. And I'm like, look at how this thing is moving. Right, there's just been an acquisition. There's been a change in power. But yet they want to maintain the moral of the but that name doesn't exist anymore. So I get it. Somebody needs to tighten this up for a minute. It, it, it's that type of, like, who's paying attention? Right? And, and it's not that it's being aligned. It's not no, nobody's, it, it, it's a subversion or anything. It's just uh, questions that we as Board of Commissioners have to ask, which is, okay. And not that I have concerns. It's just one of those, like, okay, so who owns our contract now? And I want to know if they've aggregated multiple engineering vendors or whomever. They've got this big suite of products. Well, what else did they just buy that y'all ain't quite told the Board of Commissioners yet? Like, you know, he's been notified, well, they still want their fees. And he's been notified, like, okay, but who looking at this whole thing? Like, okay, who, 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 who in this administration is going to help us understand who owns, I mean, did they just come in here and sweep and take everything? Like it, and I'm okay. I'm like, oh, what a power move. What, what, go ahead, Mr. Boyle. Wait, wait, like, ma maximize the, our contract for me and sell out. Like, in other words, you, you, you retired out. Love it. No problem. But then what, what just got bought? And, and, and what does that mean for us? And so now there's this pressure for it. No, no wonder now when the kind of mystery called me and said, okay, they're looking for more work, more than looking for more work. So it's interesting how friends can call friends for work. And they're like, okay. I said, yeah, that valuation that caught y'all. Uh-huh. Y'all done got bought, you got the new owner saying, okay, that four million is what we paid cash for. So now all of a sudden, y'all got to go find some more work. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. See, it's who's asking those questions. That's our job as the Board of Commissioners to look at the system and ask those tough questions. Right? To keep it honest. Right? And so it's what's not being said to us. I mean, so we got to sit here and discern, okay, let me listen to what they just said. Right? So I just, we, we're just looking for, the Board's not looking for anything other than at least I'm, I'm not looking for anything other than I just want to know what, what, what just happened, 
right? You're telling us after the fact. I just want to know what happened. I know what type of question to ask once I get a chance, but I appreciate, you know, you guys are fine. You did what you're supposed to do um, as far as um, being client services, meaning Terry and, and David. I don't know, well, what does this mean for y'all? I mean, what, what, what does this mean for the, the Russell relationship? So one part of it just got bought out. <coughs> this was a two-part arrangement for us. Can somebody, somebody explain what just happened with this relationship? It's that type of like, can somebody tell me what just happened? And so then you're asking me for fees for something like, but who am I giving, who, 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 who gets the fees? If Moreland's no longer around, it was a Moreland-Russell relationship, and you wanted me to, see, it's, Y'all gotta be clean within that. I, I'm, I'm taking a loan rock to do it's more educational from what we do better than that. Y'all got we ain't gotta do it in these type of meetings, but somebody gotta go to somebody in the administration and explain, okay, now what just happened? Okay. Thank you. Look forward to a presentation from uh, Mrs. I mean Vicki Moreland and her team and the first of the year to yeah, explain this process. Yes. Okay. And, and then next month I'll give the overview as far as uh, on everything that we do for minority firms and local businesses. So okay. that'll be next month. Okay, thank, thank you. you. I appreciate you. I'm going to uh, pivot it back to tab number four for the uh, county attorney. Yes, sir. Yeah, Madam Chair, I just want to report to the board. I just got off the phone with Sheriff Pounds. He's read this ordinance. He is fine with y'all moving forward with y'all's discretion, whether y'all approve or not, but he wanted to know, and I, Bobby was part of the conversation, and Bobby's in charge of all law enforcement. Sheriff Pounds wanted the public to know that this ordinance doesn't mean that he's that he's right, they're writing tickets for marijuana. They're gonna, if you violate the laws of the state of Georgia, you're gonna get arrested, booked, and everything like the normal thing. What this is, is uh, options for the Solicitor General as far as disposing of the case. Because I had somebody ask me in the hallway earlier, were well, y'all writing tickets for marijuana? Sheriff won't y'all know he's still gonna arrest people. So this is not a decriminalization from his standpoint of what he's doing in his job. Bobby, did I say that accurate? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, okay. Yeah. Okay. We're going to move on to um, we, we covered several of our business items, so we'll, we'll pick up at tab number nine. Tab number nine is to author, uh, authorization to pay Carter Watkins twenty-two thousand four hundred and fifty-three dollars and forty-two cents in addition to rebid and redesign fees for the additional uh, for the addition to the Douglas County Transportation Center. Um, Director Watson. <coughs> Good morning, Commissioners. Um, as you remember, earlier this year we rejected the first set of bids for construction of the addition to the Transportation Center. So we, re we rebid that project. In addition to that, we had to do uh, considerable value engineering to get this project under budget. And that resulted in significant changes to the shop drawings. Um, for the, the project. These two events meant that we had some unanticipated um, expenses due to the architect on this project. And so Carter Watkins has in, invoiced us for this amount, $22,453.42. And, and uh, Mr. Till and I have talked about this several times. Mr. Till has also talked to the architect about it. And we do believe that these fees are, are appropriate. And we're asking this morning uh, for permission from the commissioners uh, to, to pay this. Uh, I do want to point out that I have money in my 2019 budget for this. It's also a grant project, so we'll get 80% reimbursement on it. Okay. What's the total cost of the count? Uh, $4,490. Okay. $4,490. Okay. Any questions from the board or comments? Yeah. Thank you, Madam This This is related to the whole conversation, which is so you made the comment that we threw away the bids, right, for transportation services. And um, that was important because the bids were not, if I recall, consistent with the need to acknowledge um, the disadvantaged enterprise. This was a federal contract. Was that correct? Correct. Yes, sir. All right. So, so the, the, um, via a couple committees, both our procurement committee and the transportation committee, it was important to say, okay, uniformity, be compliant, be consistent, 
<coughs> so because um, the bid to came in and wasn't properly acknowledged, we, we just reshuffled, just do it over, right? And, and obviously it came in and you guys went through the process and the awardee was the awardee <coughs> accordingly. And who was the awardee of this? Headley Construction. Yeah, Headley Construction. Okay, mm -hmm. did, uh, all right, very good. Headley, Headley Construction? Yes, sir. All right, so uh, they came in and they won the bid, and so they're down the path. Now, this is not Headley Construction that's getting this additional right. This is the architect. The architect, yes, yeah, sir, Carter Watkins. All right, I just wanted to highlight that, mm -hmm. just, just for the record, so. Okay, thank you. Okay. Finished? Uh, Commissioner Carthen, I'm sorry. Um, just for my understanding, the $4,490 is coming out of what what fund? This this is part of the money that's already in the 2019 uh, budget, so it is coming out of the general fund, but it's not any additional money that the county will be required to pay. Okay. <coughs> and the rest of the funds are coming from what you have in your budget? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Just for clarity. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Director Watson. We're going to move on to tab number 10, authorization to award a contract for consulting services for the comprehensive transportation plan update with a negotiated fee not to exceed $625,000 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Valentin. Good morning, uh, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Good morning. Uh, I'm going to uh, set the stage for this, give you a little background on how we got to today. Uh, we had entered into a funding agreement with the Atlanta Regional Commission who's going to provide 80% of the cost of this contract. And we've been working with them in terms of uh, crafting the scope of services and the like. And we had a uh, request for proposals that was advertised. Mm -hmm. And we have four responses. And by the way, we do have, uh, and I want to thank uh, David Haynes from the Atlanta Regional Commission here with us in case there are any, any questions related to the process or the contract with the ARC. So we had a request for proposals. We had four proposals submitted. And as is typical, we had an evaluation by a review team, in-house team. Uh, we did that. The results of that evaluation were, was provided to uh, all the members of the board. And then the item was presented to the Transportation Committee. At the Transportation Committee, in addition to the technical evaluation results, uh, there were presentations that were done by all four of the responders to the RFP. And uh, then the committee uh, engaged in discussion as to what, which of the firms was the most uh, uh, rank the highest in terms of both the original technical <coughs> evaluation and the qualitative uh, discussion of the presentation. Unfortunately, a five-member uh, committee uh, was lacking a member on that particular day, so there were four members present, and uh, what we went around uh, the uh, sort of polling what the sense of the committee members was, and we ended up with two of the committee members uh, suggesting a one firm, and two, the <coughs> two other committee members suggesting a different firm. So we ended up with a tie for the firm that we would bring to the board. The discussion at the committee level was that we would just allow the item to come to the board so that the board could engage in discussion and make the final determination. And that is why there is no particular firm that's identified for this contract. Now, I did mention that uh, there were two firms that were ranked one and two, and that those were the firms of Jacobs and BHD. And those two firms uh, were ranked in terms of the uh, <coughs> technical evaluation, we're ranked uh, first and second. And now they are the same two firms that from the quality <coughs> presentation results uh, were selected as well. So that is where we are. Uh, be happy to answer any other questions 
and uh, help you with the final determination if that is the, the wishes of the board. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, and, and, and as chairman of the committee, it, it's something that I, I could have resolved at the committee level, but I thought it was important enough to bring it forward. And um, Director Valentine was was accurate in saying we agree. Madam Chair is a member of that. Agreed to take it to the full board. Um, and this is where um, this is important. You need to understand why I said I'd rather bring it forward because unlike at the state or the, the federal level, there are rules within committee. We don't really have a rule book like at the state. There's a little rule book on committees on how you settle certain things. Uh, at the same point, our procurement, um, though we had the procurement, um, our purchasing director was there, and we did have observation. The question becomes simply this. You have two names that were set for two rounds. You had two first place votes, right? Then you go, well, if they're tied, you go to the next level, right? And it could have been settled with that just by straight rules, right? You had two first place votes. They were equal. Jacob, Jacob, BBH, BBH, right? So those are the first place. You go to the second, well, that's tie. Go to the next level. I mean, the second place. How many got second place votes, <coughs> right? So can you tell the results of the second place? Um, I, I think you had what? What did you have? Uh, BBH or BBH? Then Jacobs and then modern technology. So then you, you look at the, the observation, you says, okay, so one firm had four votes, the next firm had three votes, and then you had one firm that had one vote. It, it's that simple. But I wanted to bring it to the full board to simply say, okay, what, what, what do y'all see here? Right? What, what do you really see here? There's no, um, this is just simply, and I'm, I'm going to pause here and see what people are going to say because, in essence, this is not like we're going to reevaluate. It's like, guys, the tube is right there. Those are the numbers. Now, without getting to anything else, and I, 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 Director <coughs> Peacock, I mean, what, what's your thoughts on this? On just straight, what are the typical rules that when, when you have a tie, do you go to the next? I mean, how do you normally do that? You would go back and review the qualifications. <coughs> you would look at the submittals. Yeah. You would uh, ensure that all of the pertinent points had been reviewed and evaluated. Uh, if you find that that's occurred, then <laughs> you know uh, you uh, you vote again and you vote again and you vote again until there's an answer. Right. So you, you've answered that. While we had uh, we had a third party that was there uh, from the ARC, and, and what's important. Is, is this, and it was suggested that this person was supposed to be there. There's a couple people there just as witnesses. It was suggested since we were missing a fifth person that perhaps this person would vote. And I'm like, no, you're not registered with the county. You're not registered with this committee. You can't introduce somebody on the last day to vote. This is important. Right. And so it, it was one of those where, okay, guys, let, let what, what's going on here? Let, let this go to the full board, right? Because it's like, I'm a chairman of a committee, and I walk in, I'm like, okay, what's going on? And, it's, and so it's one of those like, okay, right? It, we, we, we voted, had we had our fifth member, it would have been done like that. There's no going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It's supposed to be on the agenda, right? As our ARC member said, I remember I got a great member. He says, well, all things being equal, all firms are qualified. So we we're not going backwards. You simply make the call. So I, if what's, what wasn't answered was simply typical rules, which is, okay, how many first, I mean, why is this difficult? Now, again, because we've got to put something on the agenda, I guess I'm looking for my peers to weigh in, and maybe uh, uh, I'll, I'll yield to my colleagues who says, okay, you got two first place votes for these firms, and it's that simple. What, what do y'all see here? But, um, you know, making this difficult. And I, I appreciate you setting this up. Like, why are we going through all this? Why, why are we going through this? But I'm going to yield for a minute. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions from the board or comment? Okay. So I'm a little confused. <laughs> 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 I don't mind saying so. Okay. So these two firms 
will be utilizing the grant that we got from ARC to do our comprehensive transportation. Only one of the firms. Only one of the firms. Only one of the firms. Okay. okay. What was the what was the differentiator? Like what? Why are we here? Okay. Let, let me let me go back again to to the process. Initially, all four submittals were evaluated and they were ranked. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, and four. I see it. I see them. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and you've been provided that. That then, um, the process also allows for additional information <coughs> to be requested by the county or a presentation to be uh, requested by the county, which was done. Mm -hmm. The presentation was done before the Transportation Committee. Mm -hmm. And at that time, there were only four members present. And so once all the presentations were done, uh, the, the usual discussion it was going around the room, what do you think, what do you think, who's your number one, who's your, your second? And uh, because it, it was uh, four present, <coughs> we ended up with four suggesting one firm, I'm sorry, two suggesting one firm, and the other two suggesting a different firm. So, but we have to, well, the reason we're here today is because we're, we're hopeful that we can move the process forward um, to, to get the comprehensive uh, transportation plan update on the way. Uh, but we are looking to award, um, and the recommendation is that the board award the contract to one consultant. Now, typically, we bring you that recommendation. In this particular case, we bring you two. And uh, you may select from one of those. And you can, you can utilize the information provided to you, the technical evaluation as guidance, or other questions that you may have that we can um, provide answers for. Okay. So who is BHB? They're, they're a local consulting firm um, mm -hmm. that does this type of work. Uh, they, they're experienced as well. Mm -hmm. Any one of the four uh, respondents uh, would be capable of doing the, the project. Uh, some of them have done it more often than others. Uh, BHB is a, a firm that has done this before, uh, perhaps not as many times as some others, uh, but they are experienced and would be uh, in, 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 if they were selected. Is Jacobs local? Jacob, both of them are uh, from the Atlanta area, so they're within the 30 mile radius. Who did, who did it prior, the last time we did it? Um, my recollection <coughs> is that it was Gresham Smith who did it last time. Mm -hmm. And so what was the glaring difference between Jacobs and VHB that made two go one way and two go the other? Because um, we weren't there, so I'm no, not no, trying to get information from our... I th I, I'll speak for me personally. Mm -hmm. um, Based on, on the level of experience and, and the team that they assembled was what swayed me uh, to, <coughs> to suggest that they be uh, the one selected, but mm -hmm. others had different reasons for their decisions. So. Am I, am I? Uh, I'm not a really member of the committee, so I... Okay. Yeah. So okay. And I'll, I'll yield. So my colleague can, can was, was Jacob the number one on the technical side? Yes. So, so you're saying you don't know why the other two went with somebody besides according to this ranking, Jacobs blew everybody out of the water, so to speak. So what was their reason not to go with Jacobs? Their presentation. Well, presentation, their yeah. understanding of the presentation that was made. You mean the members of the uh, committee's perception of Yes. The, yes, ma'am. Can you give an example of what you're talking about? <laughs> they didn't like the way it was presented? or It, or? it could have been the, the team that was brought forward by the company. It could have been the team members. It could have been how they uh, shared the qualifications for the firm, whether they spoke enough about local projects or 
spoke more globally about international. It could have been many things. It's a very mm -hmm. subjective process. However, the, the ranking is, you know, favors the number one. So Jacob's I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I just wondered what was their There was not a there was not an explanation. There's not an easy way to explain it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, the fifth member didn't have a chance to uh, listen in on the uh, presentations. No. It wasn't filmed or anything because I think at one time you were filming the transportation. It was, it was filmed. It was filmed. Gary, was, Gary Watson was absent, so we only had four. So members. Gary, uh, has Gary watched the films? Have they met? Have, well, why don't you let him <laughs> watch it and bring, be the break of the tie? I need some just go check Just go check So, yeah. I have one. Do you yield back? I yield yeah. back, I'm yeah. sorry. Could I let you speak to my part? I'm going to pull that you could have a mission to ask me before. Okay. Is it okay if I ask who went which way? Because obviously their point of view, they were there, so we weren't there. So I kind of want to point. That that would be a question for Madam Chair, oh, yeah. if she would allow yeah. that. If you could ask. Okay. Then I could kick off. Okay. With my response. Okay. Uh, I went with uh, VHB again. This is my first time seeing the composites course today, uh, but just by uh, number one, I like um, their. Their technology, I thought, was more advanced in terms of uh, measuring performance, in terms of dashboards. And their team was highly diverse, and I look at diversity as well. Um, they seem very knowledgeable to me. That's just my personal. Initially, I went with modern technology. I guess that's my first group, and that sort of was blown out of the water. <coughs> but um, they seem to have the metrics and if you look at to me 21st century type of uh, their presentation was more 21st century along those lines to me and that's why I voted them after uh, modern mobility so it was not on the table I voted for them first and Commissioner Rob, uh, Robson if you wanted to chime in on yeah, why you voted for them. Yeah. Member from ARC here? Yes. yes. All right. So, so this is important because I, I remember I wrote mine down. It, it, it's important that we don't um, contaminate or corrupt the process, right? Uh, we, from a, as the chairman of the committee, I allowed um, uh, staff to present how they want this to happen. Right? Right, so yes, you had your technical, and we asked a simple question, and we got time to, to, to vote. It was winner take all, right? Vote based on what's here, and put your top two because you had four firms and all things were equal. Don't manipulate votes. There are no do-overs. If you sit here and go where I think y'all trying to take this, it's like this is going to be very bad for the county. The, there is no interpretation. The votes were cast by four members of a committee. Can't help it that the fifth one wasn't there. Right? If you're not there, you don't get to vote like anything else in the electorate or anything else. Show up, vote, be counted. No do-overs. Can't go back and say, oh, I'm going to go back in there and influence the moment. No. No corruption. The votes were simple. You said that, and I listened to us, I, I, I let this go, I said, okay, watch this play out. Right? It, it was asked that Go look at the tape, but we got a validation. We got a witness, and I was very careful on how this was going down. This is federal. I'm not playing with this, right? You had two first place votes, right? And so it was county administrator went first, Miguel went second, I went third, Madam Chair went fourth, <coughs> right? So it went, you know, whatever it went. Jacob, Jacob, BBA, BHB, BHB. And then we said, okay, well, what was the second? The second place we all revealed that as well. Right, so you had VHB, VHB, you had um, Jacobs, and you had Modern Technologies. That is the scoring. Stay there, that's what was cast. Don't manipulate this. That was the results. 
So the question really simply here is, the results is you got two first place votes, right? All right, then you go to the second place and says, okay, you got two, one, and one. So you got one firm that has four votes total that was submitted. The next one has three votes and one has one. Don't make this corrupt. Those were the votes. Don't act amateur. Don't play with this, right? And so my, my point being very simple, everybody sort of dance around like we just like, no, you don't, you're not playing with a federal contract. Don't do this, right? The results were the results, right? So you just sit back and say, okay, you got one firm, you got four, four votes. You got one firm, you got three votes. You only got one. That was the total of eight votes cast. It's that simple. Your rules weren't advanced enough to be able to say, well, what happens in a tie and so forth. So you sort of, you let it play, but you let it lie. But you don't get here and you get into a place, and that's why I said, take it to the full board, because I'm going to prove a point. Don't do this. The very thing that we're talking about, like, that's what our job is to make sure that staff, how y'all bring things forth, like, no, uh-uh. No, don't introduce somebody at the date. See, it's, it's like, where are y'all going with this? Right, so the question becomes how this plays out. So my, as chairman, I said, I defer my comment, which was clear. I said, I'm gonna wait until I come back around. All right, so as chairman, yes. Can you just tell me how you voted and then I'll yield the no, floor? No, no, but, but, but I got this. I, I already said it. <laughs> I already said how I did it. I, I voted for BHV and, and Jacobs. I, I read the order, right? So, but my, my, my point being is, is it matter how I voted? It, it, it's, you got the votes. So to ask Kelly Robinson who he voted for, the it, it didn't matter. You added the total votes. It's irrelevant of the person. Don't, the votes are adequate. They're legitimate based on our evaluation. Those are the numbers. <coughs> like, in other words, I'm not asking for validation of why I decided. We had the authority as a committee to vote. And so I, mean, I guess I'm, it's not even guessing. Y'all want it. I'm going to give this one. Again, my recommendation is you go with the one with the total number of votes. Right? So it's one firm got more votes than the next firm. And that was based, that's what they brought forth. It says, okay, we sat there beginning to tabulate. They didn't sit there and say we're going to give points. See, this is where I challenge as an educator of the fourth largest urban university in this nation. <coughs> If you're going to evaluate both technical and oral presentations, you should have stacked two. You get this amount of points for technical and this amount of points for oral. Then you add them up, and then that might have been <coughs> compensating. But what you did was simply like, okay, you did a technical, and then you just did oral and let it be subjective. And it's like, okay, I'm going to let this play out. Right, so I, I knew what I was looking at when it was going down. It's like, okay, all right, we'll see how this play out. So you, you can't go back and reinterpret it. It's like, okay, well, we, we simply said, everybody vote, and whatever comes out, that's what it's gonna be. It turned out to be a tie as a courtesy. I said, we'll take it to the full board, but the votes were the votes, right? So anywhere around it, like, I, I, I want the ARC to hear this. I want the feds to hear this dialogue on this contract. And it's like, what, were, what was the, the total? I know. Any questions from the board? Okay, I'm sorry. So, it's on the agenda tomorrow. Do we need a consensus here as to who we feel? Because he said he brought it to the board. And there's five of us here. <coughs> well, I'm looking at the composite scores and I can <coughs> see the total scores today. And it's very obvious that Jacobs has the highest score. But I like the idea of uh, taking the pressure off the board and allowing our um, uh, director Watson to look at the tape and he can have that done by the day and be the proxy and just vote. I mean, I think that's, easy. <coughs> that's typically how we do it anyway. The, the only thing I would say, Madam Chair, just to be careful because I don't know what the process is. Is there anything that allows votes? Was a votes? Is there anything we've advertised that commits a vote to that committee on that date and time, or is it open-ended? Bill, do you know? It, 
To my knowledge, there is nothing specific that, that committed the decision to have been made on that date. Uh, but it, com it comes as a recommendation. It comes as a recommendation after the initial technical uh, assessment. When we um, advertised the request for proposal, within the request for proposals were the criteria for the technical evaluation. And that is what that was based on. The spreadsheet that you have was based on the criteria that was advertised. Can we ask how the other who voted which way? We, we did just, you not do that? We just did that. Yes, I did hear. Mm -hmm. You were in the committee, mm -hmm. and you I'm, voted. I'm on the committee. I said modern mobility, and then uh, BHV. Is who voted, but look, regardless of how it plays out, I, all all the um, companies that presented were very qualified. So who, whoever we choose today, I won't be upset. We just need to move this project along. So, um, Mr. Miguel, the <laughs> Jacobs. Huh? Jacobs. Okay. How did I vote? You're the expert, right? Okay. Um, <laughs> Madam Chair, would you allow yeah. that question? Yes. Okay. Um, my first, uh, my top choice was Jacobs, followed by VHP. Okay. Mm -hmm. And who had a mark? Same, Jacobs and then VHP. Okay. Yeah. And you're an engineer, and he's. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I go with their expertise. So. Go Madam Chair, I tell you what's in the back of my head. The, what's in the back of my head without a process that specifically allows someone to reconsider by video what was presented? I'm inclined sense. not yeah. to recommend that this board. It's kind of like a zoning meeting. Yeah. Somebody's not there. Yeah. It's That's coming great. to y'all as a recommendation now. Exactly. If, they, if they want, if you want to invite them to speak at tomorrow's meeting to say what they think, that's up to you. But I, I think that the votes to vote it occurred already. I think the board, it's in the board's plate now. What does it want to do with it? I think if you do, if you allow whoever wasn't there to consider it in a different time frame, you're giving ammunition to the loser to file a protest as to how this is handled. And I agree. We'll just leave it alone. I, I've kind of moved past that when you were speaking. So I agree. Mm -hmm. So is it going to be announced tomorrow? We need for it to be announced tomorrow. So we just need to take a vote mm -hmm. tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Good. 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 Well, did, it's a, it's a we two two vote, and then it will be the time for the motion. Right. right. Okay. Let me ask you a question, Transportation Chairman. Are you looking for a name today so we could just move forward and have one name tomorrow? What are you looking for? That's normal. It's just simply it's one normal. name. Yes. Okay. And it's based on <laughs> this is a vote. Guys, this is. This is a vote. This is the very thing that the nation's like, listen to what you're saying. It doesn't matter how educated a person is or is not. If you have the ability, there is no superiority. Everybody has an equal vote. Right? So the numbers were the numbers. Like, what do y'all, listen to what you're saying. You brought it to us. But to, 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 to agree with, that's the point. Right. To agree with, like, okay, you had four, three, and one. It was courtesy. The recommendation is you go with the one with the total top, the total votes. That simple. But it just it was out of courtesy because again we didn't have one. It was, it was just simply that. But I said I would prefer my to say just go with whoever got the total number of votes. You start getting into manipulating a federal contract. Everything in this county is about is going to be subject. I got the air. I'm glad he's here to hear this. Don't play with this. Don't be amateur. Don't be, be cute. What was the total votes? Let them lie as they were. If you start getting into this, like, okay, uh-huh, okay. Right, this is construction, guys. This, this, this planning in the area this falls for transportation, you don't want to do this. You're, you're, you're creating a precedent that we're supposed to be going in, in, in a more positive way, a, a fair, a, a, a uniform way, right? You want to be above reproach. <coughs> Listen to this dialogue. 
the number, it's like we're sitting up there trying to figure out, it's the very thing that goes on at, at the state and the federal, like look, y'all trying to interpret it, you're going to purge some numbers or give more weight to this, this person's vote versus that person's vote. They're equal. They're equal votes. The total number is the total number. You add them up and it, it speaks for itself. It doesn't have interpretation like, well, that's the total number of votes. You let it be. Anything less than that is you're tipping. You're nudging. You're doing stuff just like, guys, the votes were just what they were. I, I just, you know, you, so my recommendation is you go with the total number of votes, Madam Chair, whoever got the total, the, 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 the most out of the total universe. So you got four, three, and one. Whoever got the four votes got the most. It was a pure process. Who got four votes? DHB got four votes. Jacobs got three votes. Modern Mobility got one vote. <clears throat> that was the total that the committee sent for. To, to take it anything other than whoever got the total top votes, you're, you're manipulating. And that, that's not a good place to be. But I, I got it wrong. And, and Madam Chair, today's yeah. not a voting meeting, no. so you, you can't just vote. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, you do whatever you're going to do tomorrow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Commissioner Carpenter, and then we're going to move on. Your own so just for clarity, just to make sure that I know what I'm voting for. In the very first beginning of the vote, VHB got the most votes based on, I guess both of them came up to present, is that correct? All four firms present. All four firms presented. Mm -hmm. We came down to the two being VHB and Jacobs. Actually, the, what, um, how, how we narrowed things down was selecting the top two firms mm -hmm. out of the four. Mm -hmm. okay. And so each two, member two. selected their top firm and the second firm, so the gotcha. one and two. Okay. That's how the votes were cast, and, and, and I think that's what Commissioner Robinson is speaking to. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Just wanted to make sure I understood. Okay. I yield, Madam Chair. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Guider. But we still on. need to look at the figures, the scores for every, all of them, and we've got a top ranking one that outdid the others, and it just seems, why are we asking these people to go through all these loops and everything if we're not going to go by our own standard? So I get over that. Okay. All right, any other questions before I move on? Okay, we're going to move on. Yeah. couple of things but before we move on I just want to make sure y'all keep in mind also with some other criteria you use as well as the cover letter the project um, approach scope of work project team description proposed project staffing results of reference checks schedule all the insurance procedures and budget so we don't want to dismiss those and we can talk about it tomorrow all right we'll move on to the next item um, the next item we have is tab number 11, authorization to submit the road resurfacing list attached to GDOT to be funded from the 2020 LMIG <coughs> program grant with a $500,000 local match allocation from the 2016 SPLOS and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Valentin. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the board members, you've been provided with the list uh, and uh, I've received feedback from some of you uh, and there is an opportunity to to swap out or change certain roads. We still have the ability to do that, but do, do uh, be cognizant of, of the fact that we have a budget, and so we are maxing out the budget with the mileage, uh, 9.3 miles that we have uh, on the list, uh, but there is the opportunity to uh, to swap a, what, a road for another one of equal length and uh, that type of thing as long as we stay within the budget. Uh, the application has been started. It is pending. It is being done electronically now by uh, GDOT. And so we've got the application in there pending the authorization from the board. It has to be submitted before the end of the year to be eligible for the funding. Uh, the amount of the uh, grant is by formula based on mileage, road mileage and population, and that is at uh, 1.44 million. The local match is half a million uh, to come from SPLOS. 
if the board decides to do it the same way as last year. Okay. Mr. <coughs> Just one comment, and I mentioned it, I guess, tomorrow. I'm one of those, some of you, <laughs> that um, had a little problem with this. If you start a subdivision, you run out of miles, and you stop, why wouldn't you next year finish that subdivision rather than jumping way over here and starting another project? And that was my my concern. I had put the wrong streets, but they were the cross streets, the you know the ones that went crossways. We we did a big subdivision that had two long roads, but then we didn't do any of the crossroads. And it's it's um, I just think you need to finish the area that way you can keep up with where you are in the uh, future. When you have to come back, you say, well, we'll do all this subdivision and stuff. I don't like just doing two or three streets in one subdivision and then jumping to another subdivision and, and going that way. So that was my problem. But I had given Mark the wrong street names, and when I drove it uh, yesterday or day before yesterday, <coughs> I saw that I had picked up the main road mm -hmm. rather than the crossroads. And that's what I was really talking about. I understand I that the new ones. I don't. I'm not yes, I, I, we we do have the new ones, and we're um, we're doing a field assessment of the yeah. conditions. One of them got a huge out. pothole right in the middle of it. Sure, uh, but to you to your question, Commissioner, or to your to your comment, uh, as you know, uh, we went <coughs> with a new evaluation system where we did all the roads in the county, and so. The, the the process would be that we would pull roads from the different categories within the universe of roads. That is why we composed initially a, a set of uh, a list of roads based on the budget and then we send it to you for your review so that you could have input. So th there is no um, no particular way that, uh, that we have to arrive at the end product. We start out with what would work as a contract for the budget that we have, but you you are entitled to uh, want to substitute roads out, and as long as we get the application in before the end of the year, mm -hmm. and then that is quite acceptable. Yeah. Okay. I hear okay. that. Thank you. We're going to move to the next item. Uh, tab number twelve. Uh, authorization to approve amendment number two of the right of way of acquisition funding contract with GDOT on the Lee Road widening project phase two and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents to Reverend Valentina. Thank you, Madam Chair. Th this item uh, was really a last minute suggestion. Uh, we had hoped to have all of the right of way acquisition components uh, completed for the Lee Road project. We do have possession of the right of way. These properties, there's three of them, actually, well, who essentially left now that went through the condemnation process. So if we had to move to construction tomorrow, we have the ability to do that from the right-of-way acquisition standpoint. The only lingering item is that the, the court has to dispose <coughs> of the case fully, and so there has to be a final order and judgment from the court before you close out the, the right of way acquisition uh, plan program. So there's a couple of, of properties we've resolved. One out of three, there's two left. And uh, so the, the uh, Georgia uh, Department of Transportation uh, suggested that although initially they were not uh, keen on the idea that they would allow for an extension of time on that contract so that we could be reimbursed by uh, by them uh, out of federal funds once the, those two parcels are finalized. If we didn't have this ability, then whatever expenditure we would have had or that were to come would have to be out of county funds as opposed to being reimbursed. Okay. Any questions from the board? Okay. Thank you. We'll move on to the next item, tab number 13, authorization to approve second a second amendment to the ground lease and MOL with Towercom LLC to add a 10-inch 
uh, utility easement for parcel lease uh, at 1765 Wortham Road, Douglasville, Georgia, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Manager Roberts, how are you today? I'm good. How are you doing, Madam it Chair, is. Commissioners? Yes, so uh, option and ground lease agreement was originally signed with Towercom back in January 1st of 2015. Um, you may recall that we went through the First Amendment to uh, on March 19th, 2019 of this year. Um, when they, uh, when the surveyor went back out there, they realized they had made an error. He said that they, uh, to in, in order to avoid the pavement curb with easement, they needed a 10 foot utility uh, easement. Um, to access the tower site. That's really all this is, the second amendment to, to uh, update the 10 foot easement and uh, move forward with signing for this, the second amendment option. Okay, any questions from the board? All right, we'll move on to the, thank you. Sure. We'll move on to tab 14, authorization to award proposal for the website design and development solicitation 19-023 uh, to Civic Plus for the Civic Engage Content Management System, CMS, for a total cost not to exceed $125,000, as recommended by the Program Committee and authorized the Chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Uh, Director Peacock. Yes, ma'am. We uh, uh, submitted this out to the uh, industry uh, as, a, uh, as a request to submit proposals. We received 18 proposals. Uh, for uh, to develop the county website. This is for the county, not for department, but, but for the county. Uh, we went through the evaluation process. We had the top three firms present to the evaluation committee and the program committee. And then based on the discussions and the proposals and the presentations and the rating and ranking that was done, uh, we are recommending that the website design project be awarded to Civic Plus for the Civic Engage Contact Management System. The total investment for the first year will be $54,649. Annual services after that will be just a little over <coughs> $10,000. So they're well under the, the initial $125 uh, budget that was set for this project. $125,000? $125,000. Okay. Uh, any questions from the board? Did I say what did I say? Is that, uh, oh. oh, wow. <laughs> Any uh, questions from the board? And I know uh, Commissioner Mitchell is the chairman of the program committee. Do you have any comments, uh, Commissioner Mitchell? I'll defer to, to my colleague. Oh, yes. So, <laughs> the program committee um, did hear all, all the proposals, the top three. And uh, it, it was really tough because mm -hmm. South Fire and Civic engaged did an outstanding job, mm -hmm. and um, I think I'm a little biased because Southfire is was a woman who was presenting, and she was awesome. And uh, so, Joy, if you're watching, <laughs> good, great job. We we really appreciate you. The Civic Engage because they had um, we're already working with them. They're already a vendor with us. Um, they give us such great. Um, customer service, Lisa vouched for them. Um, so we, we decided that we would go with what we know and picked Civic Engage to, to handle our website. We're using them for Civic Recreation, which the Parks and Recs is using. We have them for Civic Clerk, which we, the Board of Commissioners, use. And then we also have them for um, Civic HR, which um, Mr. Perry uses. So we will engage, Civic Engage, and we believe that they will do a great job. Okay. Yeah. Great job. Yeah. Thank you all. Any other questions from the board or comments? Thank you so much, Commissioner uh, Parker. We're excited. Yes. This has been a long time coming. Yeah. All right, we'll move on to tab number 15, yeah. authorization to approve a four-year SunTrust master lease agreement at a rate of 2.21%, or should I say 2.21%, at a principal amount of $424,683.17 for patrol cars, equipment refresh, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Peacock. Yes, ma'am. We've uh, negotiated an addendum to the SunTrust Master Lease Agreement to uh, uh, provide funding to outfit the, the, uh, the sheriff's patrol cars with new equipment. Uh, we've got three vendors that are going to be providing uh, 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 equipment to us. Um, we've gone through the process with SunTrust. We have all of the uh, legal documents have been reviewed and are ready to move forward. 
the again the lease is for a 48 month term the rate is 2.21 of the uh, for a lease amount of 424 683 17 the total interest payments for the 48 months will be 20,000 $20,180.87. I left a zero out, so I'm going to But we're asking for the, for the uh, commission to approve this lease so that we can move forward. Okay. Any questions from the board? Um, we'll move on to the next item. Before I go into the resolutions for the commissioners, I had uh, conversations with our clerk. <coughs> Uh, to determine why my meetings are going so much lower than the ones in the previous years. And we, we both uh, discovered that uh, in previous years we only had one vertical that this county had to look at in this uh, budget, or should I say this agenda, these agendas and these meetings are related to projects that's all over the county. And so she made me feel a little better because I told her I don't want my record to be that your meetings last too long, but I'm telling you these things have been just very cumbersome, but we have, uh, we are accomplishing a lot so please, this is this is the new norm for meetings in Douglas County. You only had one vertical prior to me. Now you have just multiple projects all over the county. So thank you, Lisa, for that confirmation for me because I was getting a little word, the company's word. Now we are moving to resolutions. If we look at resolutions, uh, tab number 16, the resolutions to adopt the 2020 budget. Jennifer Hallman, do you have anything for us? Or? I'll okay. just have a, a short presentation uh, tomorrow. Uh, and it will just be the changes that have occurred since the budget uh, hearing. Um, I gave all of y'all copies. I believe Mark has emailed them to you, but I also printed hard copies as well um, that showed the changes. Uh, we had a change in the uh, local option sales tax revenue increase of around 114,000, TABT revenue increase of 63,000. Uh, there were some reductions, uh, 90,000. Uh, from contingency, uh, so their contingency balance will be 315,000, or it's being proposed to be 315,000. Uh, we did reduce the assistant public defender position by 30,000 because we knew that that was funding it for a full 12 months. It'll take a good, you know, 60 to 90 days just to uh, get the person on board, as well as the school resource officers. Uh, there was a reduction of 265,000. The additions uh, were 30,000 for part-time aid, legislative aid uh, for Commissioner Carthen, 25,000 for strategic sourcing, savings and improvement RFQs. Um, the library concept design drawing uh, was 10,000 and, and uh, right now it's being proposed to be paid out of Department 190. $50,000 for a countywide leadership, diversity, inclusion, workshop, seminar. 80,000 for the GIS countywide aerial photography flyover, 30,000 for a part-time legislative uh, marketing slash intern for Commissioner Robinson. Uh, as you know, we had the renewal on the property <coughs> insurance. Uh, Matt, Matt worked very hard on trying to keep that cost low, but we still had an increase of 237,000. And then we needed to increase um, for the vehicles, nine vehicles for the SROs at 90,000. Um, also, what you have attached is the breakdown. I was asked by the by Commissioner Robinson to give a breakout of the total picture of the school resource officers, who we, uh, how we currently fund the current number, versus, as well as the additions um, that's for the request for the 17. I believe Madam Chair has had discussions with um, Superintendent North. Uh, regarding additional funding, you know, when it was presented, it was that the school board would give $595,000 for the personnel. Uh, Madam Chair uh, spoke with um, Superintendent North, and uh, they uh, got a verbal commitment that they would purchase eight of the vehicles out of their East Lost, mm -hmm. uh, as well as the uniforms and all that that go along with it. Mm -hmm. um, and the only other thing, this was just more of an admin, but I do want you to know because it is a change that you'll see. We had to add a special revenue fund called the State Court Technology Fund. That's a fund that is administered over the clerk of court. Uh, long story short, in the past it's been treated as an agency fund, uh, but due to new GASB requirements and working with the auditors, it's determined that that really needs to be, become a special revenue fund. 
doesn't change anything. All it does is it helps us meet the requirements that we did adopt the budget for special revenue fund that the clerk's office actually controls. The, the spend money out of that, the clerk has to get a court order from the judge and everything, but to check the box that yes, it's a special revenue fund, to check the box, yes, the board did adopt a budget for it, we went ahead and put it in for the 2020 budget. <coughs> Oh, that's it. Okay, thank you so much, um, Director Holman. Our Board of Commissioners also, I just would like to add to what Jennifer said. I had conversations with uh, uh, Superintendent North and also the Mayor just to look, you know, we were certainly focusing on elementary schools. This is where these 17 uh, resource officers are going. This city has, and I was under the impression that none of the elementary schools, and I owe you all an apology for that, uh, the four city schools, or should I say this, three city elementary schools have been covered for four years. They've been, uh, the mayor and the city council actually pay the upfront 100% for those three resource officers in the elementary schools. Those three schools are East, uh, I believe there's Burnett, uh, you have East Side, and then you have Arbor Station are the ones that, so they've been actually been taking care of their uh, students for four years. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. They only said the 17 that are open now, or should I say elementary schools that are not, uh, does, the, does not have coverage with our sheriff department is the, of course, our 17 that's in the county. The police department covers those uh, three schools for the city. Just wanted to make a footnote so you all could just, uh, because I said last uh, week that all 20 schools were open, you know, it's just 17 that's in the county. All right, thank you so much, Jennifer Holman. We're going to move on to the next item. Madam uh, Chair? Uh-huh. Yeah. May I? Yes, you may. Uh, yeah, um, that to, to avoid tomorrow being perhaps prolonged. Okay. Um, and only one item yeah. on, on, on the agenda that, to your point, but the school resource officers. Um, the, the city, it, only because you triggered it with the city, um, with the mayor, uh, police reports to the city. That, right. that's, a, that's a function within. Right, so I get it. If the sheriff is separate jurisdiction from us, and so is the school board, as a, as a fundamental policy, I, I don't agree with the historical provision of support to a jurisdiction that is well capable of funding its own, protecting its own, preserving its own. So my question becomes, why are we doing this? It's not about the Board of Commissioners. If you own that campus, they control every aspect of it. You can't even put a bus stop on there without that, like, no, this is our campus. Right? We control all elements associated with this. And we get it. We stand back on our little our right of way, our roads and stuff. And we recognize the sovereignty and the sacredness of a school. The school has the capacity to pay for this. There's no law that says we, the board of commissioners, should pay or contribute a supplement, an operating budget for a separate jurisdiction. We're contributing to their, like, why are we doing this? Now, I get it. Now, again, um, I, I just, I understand that his, this might have been some type of historical agreement from times in past, but as you know, no prior administration can bind the, the, the future, nor can we bind the future. Um, so it's one of those where every now and then we come across something like, okay, now why are we doing this? And why are we funding this? And when it's really not our responsibility. Now, I think the two board should be having a conversation with the sheriff, no different than the tax commissioners goes to each of the cities. As a constitution officer, he can provide coverage for, for anybody, right? Um, it, it's just one of those where I, 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 that one I, I'm like there. I just I'm gonna leave it at that. We should. I can't support. And I'm keeping it simple. I won't vote. For, I'm gonna take that out as a consent item, as a line item. I just want to do it that way for the record. I don't agree with it. So I don't want to hold up the budget. You guys done a great job. Great job. Work it out. Thank you. That one line item I want to take out and let it be a public vote. Um, since we like to take things out of consent all the time, uh, we're gonna take that one out and let it vote and let everybody weigh their conscience. But with that one, I just I fundamentally don't we, we should be doing that. I've talked to enough citizens. I've talked to another jurisdiction outside of our world. They're like, why are y'all doing this? We can't find anybody like, why are y'all paying for our school boards 
resource officer. It's not about care. It's about who is responsible. Uh, with a five times bigger budget than us, um, you know, it's like that's which is not the point. The point is, but why are we why are we supplementing their operating budget? Okay. Well, uh, yeah. okay. <laughs> Commissioner Geiger. Um, I understand Cartham wants a part-time aid marketing intern, mm -hmm. and Robinson does too. Correct. We don't have one. We have someone that keeps our keeps us at the meetings where we we're supposed to be. The previous commissioner did not have one, and if if this is the case, why would it not come out of their monthly expenses? Good question. Certainly, I've allocated enough uh, dollars for you and Commissioner Mitchell Especially. if you want one, but you haven't stated that you want one. Are you just saying, it, is it a consensus that we need to change it? What are you, what are you implying? Well, my consensus is you don't need it. Uh, I mean, we, we do our With own. We, years, we do yeah. our own phone call. Well, if anybody calls me and they need to talk to me, the, a message is sent to my home phone or uh, my cell phone. I do my own website. Um, I don't know what they would have that we don't have. <laughs> okay. And it just seems like it would come out of their monthly I would love to tell you what I don't have. I don't have your time. I'm not retired. Ma'am, you don't know what I'm involved in. <laughs> so I don't, I don't get where you think that. Well, just it, because I'm just saying, but why wouldn't I'm, it come I'm, out of their monthly expenses? Especially if y'all vote to in, increase the monthly expenses. Any other comments? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I missed that. I, I, I missed all this. So okay, I all right. Well, I didn't all right, no, 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 no. But what's okay, marketing? Sorry. No, what's marketing? I don't know what marketing is. Is it campaigning? What, what's marketing? I'll let, allow Commissioner Carson to answer. So you you have a website that you keep up and that you do, yeah. and you have town halls that you keep up and you do. I do. I don't have any of that. I don't have the time to do that. Not only that, legislation, it took me, even with my team of purchasing, it took us six, seven, eight months to come up with that legislation. And I didn't even communicate with them most of the time like I wanted to because I work full time. We are a legislative body. We need to have legislative interns. I can't believe that you all function without one. We, we, to me, it's preposterous to think that. Don't cut her off. Let her have to be it, it, just, <laughs> it, it just baffles me that you all don't have anyone here actually helping to do what needs to be done in terms of a commissioner. I think most people think that we are full time, but we are not. We are part time. So the amount that I want to give to my constituents as far as time, as far as resources, as far as getting information out to them, I don't have the time to do that. That's why I asked for one. Lisa and they do a great job. Lisa and Sherry do a great job, but they don't have time to do that either. So a lot of times I'm turning to other staff, such as Tiffany, who already has a mountain full of stuff to do. You're no different than me. I am very different from you. I have seven staff, I have a full-time job, <coughs> and I own a company, and I do a plethora of other things. So just like you say, you don't know what's on, I don't know what's on your plate, you don't know what's on my plate. Mm -hmm. So the very things that you say you put out, I can't put out. Do you mm -hmm. ever see anything from me put out? No, because I don't have the time. If I can have somebody to come in and do what you do in your retirement, then I would love to. And this $30,000, we don't know how much. That equates to about $15 an hour. Most of our staff makes more than $15 an hour. So I have to come out and find somebody for $15 an hour to do what I wish I had what the time What is marketing? Do. I don't know. I just told you. I just told you. It's the website. It's the town halls. It's the getting out there to make sure that people understand what the narrative is of the Board of Commissioners. I don't have time to go out and do what you do. So that's the marketing. That's the intern. Anything else? You don't have time to have I a town don't. hall. You call the town hall, so why wouldn't you have time? I don't to have do time it? to even put it on. I'm grabbing Mark to say, "Do you have time to do this on this date?" They don't come in and set that stuff up. That's what we do. They don't make the agenda. 
They don't pull out the resources. I'm pulling stuff from Rick's office to make sure that we're set up. I'm asking Tiffany, can you take it over? I'm doing this, but this is on my time that I really don't have to give to the constituents the way that I would want to. And an aide would We've do that. We've just never had them. I know you haven't, but you've never had someone at my level to do it the way that I want to do it either. Okay. So that, that's, it's, it's a difference. Commissioner Goddard, it's a difference between you and I. Well, how you run District 4 is how you run District 4, but how I want to run District 3. If you three, have to have special right. stuff, why the would expenses, it come out of your the, expenses? The, one has the floor, and you, got, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't <coughs> question somebody well, got the floor. Well, Commissioner Carter, I mean, Commissioner Goddard had the floor, but she just she posed a question. So are we finished? We're finished. So basically, Commissioner uh, Goddard, mm -hmm. she answered the question. She says the difference in the way you all run your offices. And what I wanted to do as the chairman of this board is not to dictate, because all of you all are sovereign. And I can't tell you how to run your, your offices, but it's my understanding that this uh, administration, or should I say our commissioners, are more involved than what's been done in the past. They're here all day long working. And so I didn't question, uh, because I, again, I expect a lot of things to be produced, and I have a lot of vigor. And with that being said, Commissioner um, Robinson, you have a comment here. Yeah, I, I, I want to be sensitive that, that this, how we got here is uh, when it comes to this, like interns, when, when this first came forth, the original ask was $50,000, and, okay. and it was for all commissioners. Okay. All, so when I came in and heard the comments, says, well, what about you? No, no, I advocated for all four. Now, they have the right to say, I don't want it. Correct. But there was no only this person, only that person. That is not how this went down. Just like with the interns. When we went for that and I advocated for that, everybody had an intern. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to do it. Commissioner Mulcair didn't do it that first year. Mm -hmm. he didn't. And, and that, that was his right. Right? So it's consistent. Well, I'm going to be real careful when I heard this get framed. Like, no, it was for all four. Mm -hmm. You determine how you're going to run your office. No problem. We don't have to justify our actions to each other for, for any reason. You were voted by the people. You advocate for what you want to advocate for. He advocates and we're all good. We go to the mat like, okay, you all got to be accountable, right? How, how this is done, right? There, 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 there's this sort of, you ain't got to do it that way, right? So everybody weigh in, you know, you, 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 you count and you get this done. But that's not how this went down. Everybody had an opportunity to, to redefine how they were. That's the whole thing. You can't, I can't wear them old shoes. Like, I appreciate you, Dad, but. I got I, I to gotta do it differently. No, I ain't, I, I, I'm not going to do it that way. And, and you can take it to another level, and you can do that. I mean, you can look around. There's more proficiency. There's more performance. There's more. But you don't have to justify it. This one doesn't have to justify it to each other. Take your position, right, and how this plays out plays out. But there's no um, how this gets funded. Well, it's part of like any, like a congressional, that's like saying Congressman Scott doesn't have district offices, and he doesn't have personnel for that. Right, or our, 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 our state representatives, or whatever case, they don't have support. Yeah, they do. Yes, yeah, do. If you really want to do a good job, we just want to be puppet heads and show up every now and then to our favorite, you know, clubhouse and stuff and look at, our, and we stay in our little world, but if you really want to get out there and you want to communicate, right, right, we're not talking about campaign. It ain't, it ain't that hard in Douglas County. Right, but you do want to communicate good information. You want to be able to drive it, and we should not have to be able to pull on that staff because the issue is, well, I want to get done. They really can't because, like, okay, I don't want to wait in queue. I got to wait for Henry. Okay, she talking to Aunt. Like, I need my stuff done now. Right? So we've gotten to a point where we queued this up. Now, we can't be pulling on the same old people that should be dedicated to the executive. We need our own world. Right? So out of a $100 million budget, y'all can play about $50,000 per person. Like, really? Really? And this is for the citizens. I have no problem with my $200. <coughs> we take it to the public. Now, look forward to doing so. Right? If somebody doesn't want it, that's fine. That's for our collective voice. But this ain't no debate amongst each other on like, weigh in whether or not why you don't want it, but you can't define or dictate what I'm going to get or not get or what I will advocate for. You will never win that one. But you're okay to take your First Amendment, but you can't. We've had this. Right? Everybody will have to respect all y'all. That's why when I think I, I, everybody gets one. Now they have the right to say, but I don't want it. That's fine. But it was no slight. There was no superior. There was sort of. It was none of that play. Why I get one? Why I get money versus? See, that's why this was framed wrong. 
It's like everybody gets it. It was framed wrong, so it was real slow. To how it was like, okay, they they were able to command resources down, and not like, no, that's not how this went down. It was thoughtful for all four of us, and we respectfully respect each other. You know how this works. We respect each other's voices. We acknowledge each other's input. And if you choose as whoever you are, saying, I don't want that, well, amen. But don't, it wasn't a sleight of hand. And so I don't want to belabor this. I think we got other stuff to do. do. This was a simple one. But. Okay. Okay. Thank you. For well, Commissioner uh, Mitchell, I said, yeah. Are you finished, Commissioner? I was okay. just wondering, I don't know what he's talking about. Uh, the ARC in turn is just separate, is it not? ACCG. ACCG. Oh, yeah. The ACCG yeah. interns, they're separate, right? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Okay. They are separate. But I just want to make sure that Commissioner Guider and Commissioner Mitchell know that I called something out for you as well, 3030, but I said they hadn't asked for anything, so I'll wait till they ask because you're representing your offices. And again, like I said, you all represent your offices in whatever you want to say. Well, I, I'm just saying, why wouldn't it come out of your monthly <coughs> expenses? That's what it's for. Otherwise, why have a limit on what you have set aside for each commissioner? I don't have a county phone. Yes, this is a new day in Douglas Commission, yeah. and we're not, I, I just don't understand what you're saying. When you put Limitations. One, I can say this, and I'm going to stop after I say this and allow Commissioner Carthen to chime in. And I'm certainly not in defense mode. But I said, I want the commissioners of these districts to be treated like, you're not, I don't know what type of treatment you had before I arrived, but I have respect for your, your offices and what you do. And for me to be closed minded and not listen and say they did this 10 years ago, five years ago, what the other chairman did, I have nothing to do with what they did. I'm listening. I'm, I, I, they're bringing a high level, level of education to the table. They have ideas. They have innovation. And they want to make some things happen. And in order for these things to happen, I said, OK, I got I to open my mind a little bit. They're not asking for someone to come on with benefits. Now, that, that's a whole different story. They're asking for, to have some money allocated so when they need these big, big projects, and they're not just looking at just regular projects. They're looking at spreadsheets. They're looking at things that we don't have the talent in this organization to do, uh, find uh, analysis. When they're asking for analysis and dashboards and things that's way high level, I don't have it in this organization. We, can't, we don't have it. We don't have a financial analyst that can go in and, and craft reports that they're asking, dashboards and uh, all types of graphs. And I'm going, we don't have it. But if they feel that they need some, some extra help or some hands to help get these projects pushed through, or as they prepare for their town hall meetings, it's okay. They, the thirty thousand dollars is going to be carved in a personnel uh, budget, I think, and then it's going to be trackable. So it's not free money for them to spend. Jennifer Holman is going to look at this. So whatever that thirty thousand dollars is attached to, we already queued it up. It's going to if, if that person come in and work, we're going to track their time, and they may not even utilize the entire thirty thousand, but they have some money available if they need some extra hands on deck. So it's not extra money for them to just. Uh, it's not a slush fund. It's not for them to just do what they want to do with, it, but it's, it allows them to have that administrative support when and uh, when they need. And Sherry is excellent, but for five, four commissioners to, to be on one person, particularly when you got some with higher needs than others, it's, it's pretty rough on them. So I'm going to stand, um, and, and they may use it, but Jennifer and I have uh, set up a plan. Jennifer, you can, if, if you could explain it, then I'll call the Commissioner uh, Mitchell. Tell them what, how it's going to be mapped so that the citizens understand what the process is. The funds will just uh, will be placed in part-time line item, and then um, it will, you know just when the person persons get paid, then it will be <coughs> recorded in that line item. And at any given time, we can run reports on that line item or on that particular intern or interns to see the amount spent. So it's trackable. Just want to make sure it's just not going to be some money just thrown out over the just thrown over the wall. It will be trackable money. Commissioner, did that answer your question, Commissioner Guyton? And I know probably. And you. And My question you, was, why doesn't it come out of the monthly expenses? The monthly? That's what's and you know been allocated for every commissioner. Why can't it come out of 
her the expenses. And I'm not just picking on <coughs> her. I'm just saying we've never had it. The previous commissioner never had it. He's full time. He doesn't have it. So I just wondered why. Yeah, I know you said Commissioner Mitchell doesn't have it. He may want it. I'm not sure we had any, had any discussion with him yet. But when you look at other counties, uh, and certainly I benchmark with other counties, Henry County uh, looked at the Cab County. We look at the they do have a little stipend or some support to allow them to have an aid. So this is nothing new. I am not reinventing the wheel. Wheel. This is again. This is a request from our commissioners, and I want to honor that request if that's what they want to run their offices. Now, you can't tell me in one vein that you're sovereign, and the next vein I dictate. So you got to give me, I, it can't be either or. I need to say, they said, this is what I need for my office. It was not unreasonable. Again, we're tracking it. I want to make sure that it's tr being tracked. I'm not just saying yes and not looking at it. I'm, I'll track it. So it's not either or. You have the option as well. Commissioner, are you interested? If you're not, I won't carve it out in the budget. Do you need some support? I don't need it. Okay, so there, I don't have to worry about tying up 30000 Okay, I'll, uh, you finished, Commissioner Guyton? I don't need it. Oh, I'll, I'll speak for him. Okay, okay. are you, are so, you finished, no, Commissioner no. Guyton? Oh. Yes. Okay, okay. Oh. Commissioner. Now, with that, um, I'm going back to Vice Chairman and to Renewal, what they stated. This was for the commissioners. commissioners. Um, advocated for the commissioners. I don't know who decided to say we had to advocate for what that is. We didn't advocate for interns. It was a, a brought to our attention about interns. So we got interns for those who didn't want it. They just stepped aside and didn't use them. So that's on the, the board of commissioners, not on anyone else of this entity to decide on who gets what and why. So advocating for it or not, it should be put there for I, each one of these guys, each one of us. And if we so choose to use it, then we will. If we don't, then there's no need. I use sometimes all of the $300, um, uh, the, the, the $300 that we got advocated for our expenses. Sometimes I don't use it any of it. So it's, if this something which I think I need for sure, but I didn't have to advocate because I heard from my vice chair, I heard from my colleague asking for this for the commission, not for him or her or anyone else. So hopefully that answers that question. The other part is, let's move to the SRO officers. And I think he was getting ready to try to explain to me this part of it. Because um, uh, as I stated, and I think Vice Chairman Robinson stated as well, I, I don't quite get why we negotiated something that we didn't agree upon, yet alone pay for something that traditionally, yes, has been what we paid for, get it. Not that it was right or wrong, but now, we're at a budget now that I don't see us being able to afford this unless we increase the property taxes. Now, if you're increasing the millage rate, then I think we can probably go ahead and pay for it, if that's for what you choose. But can you go through this once again for mm -hmm. me so I can then I'll, then I'll uh, ask my next question. Sure. Uh, the, the first portion is what we're currently doing, um, meaning that, you know, there's right now there's a total of 22 R SROs. Uh, 13 of those are being reimbursed by the Board of Education, the, the salary and benefits. At, um, this is based on next year's number, so just uh, one point, almost one, just under $1.2 million. Uh, then the county general fund is paying for the nine of the 22 at just under um, 700000 So right now... So, so, so 13 is not under the count, out of the county's budget, but I'm hearing you correctly. Great. They are charged to the county, is included in the sheriff's budget. However, we bill okay, the Board so of Education. Also, the Board of Education pays 1.5 or 1.2 yeah, million dollars, and we Less. pick up the other 697. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Okay, okay. Because I, I, I ask my colleague, uh, Vice Chairman, to, to pull these numbers so I can kind of, you know, kind of gravitate as to what we've done in the past. Mm -hmm. Because I even said to these guys and to everybody else, we probably shouldn't or cannot afford to continue even that makeup, mm -hmm. which is of 22 officers uh, and spending, you know, over a half a million dollars just from that alone. Mm -hmm. Okay, go okay. right. So uh, that's what's currently happening. So th those have been in the budget for, you know, for many years, and that's, that's how it's been 
um, divided out. Mm -hmm. uh, then the additional request, uh, which is the 17 uh, additional SROs for the elementary schools, um, totals of those is um, around $1.1 uh, million. Okay. That's just salary and benefits. And then, of course, you have the vehicles, the equipment, and uniforms. Um, which would be the county uh, would lease nine of those 17, um, so that would be a cost of 90,000. So that's $1.2 million. The verbal commitment from the Board of Education is that they would contribute 595,000. Of so the 1.1. Of the 1.1, mm -hmm. yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the net cost to the county's general fund is 600,000 on the, on the new request for 2020. So the second or the third block is pretty much taken what we're currently doing plus what's being proposed in the additional request and telling you what that breakdown is. So if if it is passed as what is being proposed with the additional 17 SROs, then there would be a total of 39 SROs, just over $3 million. Mm -hmm. uh, the current, uh, the total funding from the Board of Education would be $1.7 million and the funding from the county would be 1.3 million. Um, and again, I just, as chairman and had stated on the third bullet point down, uh, that received a verbal commitment from Superintendent North that in addition to the 595,000, that the Board of Education would purchase eight of the 17 vehicles. And of course, we would then lease the other nine, uh, totaling around $320,000 out of their lease lost. Got it. And, and, and what I was saying, and, and thank you for that. But I'm, I'm going back to say, guys, first of all, I go back to say, how and when did we negotiate a deal of this caliber without first completing with this board as to our take on this amount of, of expense? Do you understand this expense is what it is today, even with the, with the contribution of 1.1 uh, from the school board? <coughs> Is that going to be next year's amount as well, or is it this time in this budget alone? Because if not, that compound comes becomes a part of our budget from that point forward. Or help me to understand that process, and then I got my last question. Um, currently, with the Board of Education, okay. they are making the one point one today. Um, today for the but, for the thirteen, and then after that, it becomes our expense. No, they make that payment every year. Every year, okay. Mm -hmm. Good. That's and then enough. it's okay. my understanding that's on the current um, 13 that they pay for. It's my understanding that the additional 17 that they're requesting that they would make an annual contribution of $595,000 every year. Mm -hmm. um, and then they would make the initial 320000 for the vehicles one time. Oh, one time, okay. For the vehicle, so but the so 595 is my understanding it would be recurring just like their 1.1. So you need to redo your numbers to make sure that because if you, if, you, if you do the calculation, that becomes a, an expense to us of the 32, the, the, the 32K. I mean, uh, 323. When they were, if, right. if when they replaced the vehicle. That's correct. That's correct. correct. So that, would that, be an annual, they would be when it was So I'm just saying that to, so this board can kind of hear mm -hmm. that, hear the numbers and make sure they understand where the numbers will come from down the road. And the only way we're going to fix this, if we take this route, is with the military if by chance you want to continue down this path. Um, I think it's time that we take, as we did with the, the cities and everybody else, take and create our buckets. Remember the buckets we did back in the day of the buckets? Some of us here, you, you may not have been here to understand the buckets. But we create the buckets, and the buckets will determine, not determine, it will, it, it will give you those numbers which you need to pay based on the services that you're asking at the county, and I'm not saying this to you though, mm -hmm. I'm talking to the board, mm -hmm. that will be the number that they will contribute to this particular funds when it comes to SROs. I don't think any man on this board mm -hmm. want to see a Columbine or anything of that <coughs> caliber when it comes to our kids. But however, it shouldn't be presented to us as an expense versus someone who receives roughly about 70% <coughs> tax dollar. I can quite understand that. Not that I don't want to help in this whole process, but I, I still think we've got to look at another, we, we got to make sure everybody's paying their fair share, as opposed to on the backs of the, of the, the folks in Douglas County. It's only fair they pay their fair share, unless I got it wrong. I don't, I don't know where and how that we can come up with this to say, 
I've talked to the mayor, I've talked to uh, Mr. Trent North, and so on, to say this is a good place to be. And furthermore, more, how and when did we all have a conversation prior to this, as I always keep asking, who negotiated this deal? Because I, as, this, as part of this board, would like to have been a part of that negotiation, but I wasn't. So I don't have any knowledge of this other than what you're showing me now and what you've shown me a few weeks ago about what that is, which I've advocated and said, I don't think that's a good idea and I don't think that was negotiated well. As I've stated to my colleagues, the same thing, and I respectfully understand what you're saying. This is not in our best interest and not in the best interest of those whom we uh, serve, the citizens of Douglas County. Not that we try to exclude or say that the, the kids are not important, because they are. But can we afford <coughs> this? As I keep saying, this looks good on paper. And I know my colleague get that wrong, what that statement is all about. <laughs> it looks good on paper. But can we sustain this and afford this? Absolutely not. And I yield. OK. Thank you, Commissioner um, uh, Mitchell. Certainly, you said who negotiated this deal. I just want to make it clear. I know you're implying me, but I'm going to make it very clear to you and everybody in this room. I didn't negotiate anything. The sheriff brought this to me as part of his BRR, and I edited it. And of course, we've been discussing it ever since. But I did do some of the leg, leg work, particularly as you all had questions about who was going to pay what certain portions. I certainly took upon myself to ask uh, uh, Superintendent North if, if he would assist. So some of the things I've been kind of in the middle. But this was something that was brought to my attention to the sheriff department, and of course he's already funding all the middle schools, and also he has uh, he's not funding the 100 percent, but he has a shared cost with the school system for all our middle schools and our high schools. I, I again, I'm I'm just one vote um, tomorrow. Well, we're funding it. Don't don't think his budget is our budget. Just right, don't, don't right. That's what I'm saying. Okay, that's what I'm so, saying. I understand so, that. I just said I understand. So but tomorrow, he's not funding it. Then. We are funding it. Right. Well, okay. we are funding it through okay. his through his budget, should I say that. Okay. Just one comment. Yes. Public safety is the main purpose of government. Okay. <laughs> and whether it's on private property, school yes. property, or wherever, it's it's our duty to fund public safety. So and I, I didn't have as much of a problem with this as you Right. Did. And I'm not saying we should not, pub, not uh, fund public safety. Mm -hmm. But if you look at any, if you look at the colleges and the churches and everybody else for their safety or for their for their uh, know, security, for their school. security. This is public school. Keep that in mind. Well, but they got it's a public private. budget. They got a full public budget of about seventy percent. Mm -hmm. They got a full public budget, and we got thirty percent that we split amongst the cities, the other counties, and everybody else. That we could, it's not a full thirty percent. Now, I'm not saying we don't need to look at doing something or look at public safety. But I don't think it should be uh, positioned to us as an expense because of what we've done in the past. Okay. I'm not even, not even that, but it, it's, it's, we got to create the buckets that we did with the cities because we, at one time the cities, and I apologize if I'm out of order, uh, Madam Chair, at one time the cities were at a point of reference and, and can't correct me if I'm wrong. The cities, at one time, we, we, we kind of had this run in about how do we fund fire, uh, animal control, and everything else. And we came up with this, these buckets to make sure everybody paid their fair share. But in the past, we funded it all, period. But it wasn't fair to the unincorporated uh, Douglas Counties to pay all of that. So we came up with the buckets to make sure everybody paid their fair share. Not to say they paid enough. But we came up with some numbers and came to a result. So yes, we should at least investigate, but I don't think it should be whether they got one officer or 51 officers. Yes, we, can, we should be providing public safety for Douglas County and Douglas County, for sure. But we shouldn't make it an expense to, to our coffer for those who are trying to incorporate Douglas County. That's all I'm saying. Okay. I'm finished. Okay, yeah. Commissioner, are you finished? Yes, I'm okay. done. Commissioner Carter. Mm -hmm. One last thing. Um, I brought this up in our budget retreat in regards to sure us uh, incurring this expense. 
because being a new commissioner, it didn't make sense to me that we would be shouldering this responsibility when the BOE does have 70% of the dollars that Commissioner Baker collects, and we only have 30% or 33%, however it is. Mm -hmm. um, and not all of that, by the way. And not okay. exactly okay. not all of that because we you know, get to the cities and everything else. But at any rate, um, I definitely think that the BOE is more than capable to work this out with the sheriff's office to negotiate or contract or whatever they need to do to make sure that the schools are covered because that is the main goal which is to make sure that students are safe in the schools mm -hmm. everybody has their budgets we have our budget to disseminate amongst the department heads who are sitting here and as we have witnessed today there are some departments that are lacking their own resources in order to help make our county better, in order for us to be able to meet the budget demands that we do have within the county, just this BOC. Tax assessors being one of them, board of assessors being one of them. Um, so when we look at disseminating more budgets to other entities that do have more than their own, they have probably 10, 11 million dollars in surplus where we don't have any. Um, I did read one of my colleagues' emails that said we don't have a savings and we need to be making sure that we do have a savings and this helps us to do that. So we just have to incorporate all the things that we're thinking about. The other thing, I had a constituent walk in with me and stopped me and said, hey, I need you to look at the road near my house. We need a right away, a turn lane, a, a roundabout. We need something there. I told him, I said, could you send that to me an email? He says, well, Commissioner, I don't do emails. Maybe I can get a chance to sit down with you. Maybe I can do something, figure that out. And I'm cringing because I need to be out of here right now, and we're still in here. But if I had an aide, if I had somebody that can go down there with my constituent so that he can tell them what it is that they need, so then I can look into that and get with Miguel or get with Mark or whoever I need to. These are the types of things that we need in our county to make sure that our constituents understand we do have your back. We do need, we, 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 we are listening, but we are only one person. So again, I just want to make sure that District 3 understands that I'm not just spending money. I'm spending money on you to make sure that we have what we need so that your communities can be better. And with that, I give them. Okay. Well, thank you all so much. You guys, uh, we'll, we'll look at it tomorrow, and it sounds like it's a general consensus that we're going to pull this sheriff department piece off and for a vote. Certainly, uh, just want to look at principle versus practicality. Um, we do have some schools that are open, 17 elementary schools, I'm going to make it very clear again, that are sitting ducks out there. Uh, we are currently, we have the high schools, and we have uh, just in history, historically, we've taken care of our high schools and our middle schools. But this is a little different, and it's something that's been brought to my attention. Uh, we all had an opportunity to look at Sandy Hooks. We can delay it, and certainly we can uh, either we can take uh, this bull by the horn, and, and we, it doesn't regard regardless. I'm quite sure that if the citizens, if their taxes had to be raised, it is for a purpose to save our ki kids that's in these schools. We probably have about 20,000 uh, elementary students sitting today with no. Uh, oversight in terms of uh, sheriff, and we are living in a different climate today. So I'm, I'm a little concerned. I, I, I know the board of education should be paying their part, but I want to make sure we do our part and take care of these babies. And we can certainly move numbers around a little later. But today, at this hour, we need 17 schools covered here in Douglas County, and I need someone in those uh, schools uh, with a rifle or whatever it takes to protect these babies here in Douglas County because I'm quite sure the mothers and fathers hear my plea to this board today about what we need in these schools. We will vote for it separately, uh, Lisa, tomorrow, and then we'll just see what plays out. I'm gonna move on to the next item. The next item is, as discussed, is uh, we have tab number 17, resolution to raise the expense allowance of each commissioner from $300 per month to $500 per month, effective It'll be effective January 1st, 2021. And that's uh, legal department. Yes, Madam Chair, the, the statute allows you to increase the in expense from up to 300 per month up to, what, uh, up to whatever y'all want. But this one is up to $500 a month based on discussions that um, this board has had. Uh, 
I will say that there's been an ad run once a week for three weeks. I can confirm that with Lisa. The budget impact is not felt until uh, the 21st, uh, 2021 budget, because it won't go into effect until after the general elections, which are in 2020. So this will be a January 21 uh, expense item, and it changes the expense, I want to say, from that time to 18000 to 30000 I believe, is the actual budget impact. And that's been advertised as well. You've invited the public to, to provide input. I don't know if any's been received. But it does, uh, tomorrow it's just a simple resolution to decide to move forward. Okay, sounds good. Any questions from the board? We'll move on to yeah. tab. Let's show about Yeah, no question. Just, just a comment. Um, three to five hundred. Um, it, it's historical. Um, you know, some of the, some of the, the actions that were taken uh, this past year regarding our general assembly. It's, some of this is is the principle. It's, it's two hundred dollars, and I got this. It's it's like mm. right. some of the actions. To your point, it should be taken out. Some of the actions I will bring out legally that the prior administration has done against existing commissioners. It's like I just want to let that go. Right? Some of the you know, punitive, some some I would call water illegal. Right, when you go get outside counsel to move on sitting commissioners, right? It, it, like, no, it's the principal. Commissioner Moulton, he didn't want the two hundred dollars because it was going to push him over a different tax bracket. We understand that. You have the right. We all get it, but you don't have to accept it. Mm -hmm. But some of the actions that were done, the reason is they don't want to empower the district commissioners because again, that the, the whole point is to concentrate it in a king. She's right. It was to concentrate. You weaken the district commissioners. You don't give. You don't empower them. You don't give them staff. You don't give them money. And so they're they're unempowered. You try to say staff is more important. They're more superior. They're all that. You give them their power. It's like the law. Now this, this, that that spirit. You know, we've been waiting on this one a long time. Okay, okay, I'll catch you later, as I say. Because you call that spirit out and says no. It, that, now that's what. That, that, that type of behavior doesn't take a rocket science. You can, you can say it's this and it's really that. It's like, yeah, okay. We'll, we'll come back to this. Right? You gotta understand what this was about. And you don't have to argue that you're you're advocating for your citizens. You don't you negotiate yourself for two dollars like that ain't you got your folks, you ain't gotta argue that. It ain't gonna be that way no more. That thing's been broken free. Right? It's moving on. No. They pay attention. Right. It, it, it's all that historical just been nice. But th those who are unaware, it's like, yeah, here we go. Full circle. <clears throat> it's that type of behavior that you're trying to convince that, like, what is the, nah. You don't, you don't negotiate this yourself. <coughs> Ted and I have to help even below. It's like, yeah, that was old. That was bad. We, we, yeah, yeah, we need to do something better. We just need to make sure we enforce it. Right? Go both ways. It's not one way. But, but you don't have to adhere to the old. Like that's old, you know, new wine and old sackcloth. Just like no, we we're not putting that on. Moving forward, right? So some of this conversation is like, oh, hey, come on, guys, it's two hundred dollars, but it's the principle. It ain't the amount. It's the principle. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You did that. Okay. Thank you. Bill. Thank you. We'll move on. Uh, so you all will be aware of what the commissioners is. We we've been three hundred dollars for probably about the last 25 years, and certainly we've had things increase all over the years, so I know the citizens definitely won't be upset because other counties have already moved to $500 uh, per month. I don't utilize my my money at all, but that does not mean that I penalize my district commissioners because they don't need the rules. It's just extra money going back into the coffers of the counties. But they, this, this is much needed, and I look forward to our vote tomorrow. Okay, let's go to tab number 18, annual renewal contracts. Authorization to renew agreement with Dr. Raymond L. Fowler, MD, FACEP, to serve as medical director of the Douglas County Fire and EMS Department and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents uh, with final legal review. So that is just for tomorrow, Board of Commissioners, Dr. Fowler is our medical director. Any questions before I move on? 
tab number 19, authorization for the chairman to execute a 2020 employment agreement for contract employees. That's going to be on for tomorrow's work for the commission. Move on to tab number 20. Do you have anything? All right, we've got a laundry list that I'm giving you. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to let you go. Yes, ma'am. Okay, tab number 20. Authorization for the chairman to execute a 2019 annual agreement with the Chamber of Commerce, Cultural Arts Center, Share House, Douglas County Shel Shelter Incorporation, mm -hmm. County At Contract Attorney for Dependents, Bishop Law Group. Did I miss one? Yes. Oh, wait a minute. Yes. County Attorney, Board Assessors of Attorney, Employed Car Allowances, Juvenile Contract Attorney for Dependency, Bishop Law Group. Juvenile Contract Attorney for Dependency, Marcia O'Brien, Juvenile Contract Attorney for Dependency, Johnson Law Firm, Juvenile Contract Attorney for Dependency, Amber Walden, Juvenile Contract Attorney for Dependency, Lisa Johnson, uh, Juvenile Contract Attorney for Dependency, SR uh, Law Group, and then there was a couple of removed by the clerk, of, and then I'm just gonna keep going. Juvenile Contract Attorney for Dependency, Tim McMillan, and then Stan Co. and Association, and then Justice Consultants, LLC, and Tourism and History Commission, and Economic Development Authority, MOU. That's a mouthful. So Board of Commissioners, <coughs> uh, Commissioners, these are these annual contracts that are coming up uh, for review or sign, to be signed. I noticed you had your hand up, Commissioner Robinson. Yeah, yeah, I, I did. I, I, again, I know which one I want to go after first, to contract employees or the vendors. So go with vendors first. All right. So with vendors, are all vendors one-year notification? Answer my, answer my question, so by the way, all vendors that are listed here, if we choose to change our mind, is it one-year notice and is it consistent? Is it uniform? I might have to read through all 45 of these to get to an answer. Somebody needs to be able to answer that question. We ask it every year. I'm going to ask it again. Is every one of these consistent? And if it's not, it better be tomorrow. Or I'm going to vote it down. No, they're all annual. They're all annual contracts. Right, so okay. Annual contracts. Let me say this different. Right. Yeah. To give notice, do they have the same amount of notice? I'm very specific in what I'm asking. Don't, we don't. have to check them. All right, there you go. Don't, don't, don't. This moment is not one y'all want to play with right now. Just be honest, keep it simple. I'm asking for notice. Now I'm going to take this to the employees for the contract. Now, my employees are, for the most part, you guys, is it one year? You got one year? Are you guys on contract for one year? And do y'all all consistently get 60 day notice, 90 day notice? I just want to know if y'all consistent. I just want to, I like uniformity. So if one person gets this and that person gets that, I'm questioning, well, why can't they have? If it's all 90 days, it's all 90 days. If it's all six months, it's all six months. But I don't like that, well, this person is greater than that person, or this person, no. <coughs> not with this, you're not. So, the question is, and it's okay if you don't know Crown Mystery, and I'm giving time to, to determine it. When I ask it again tomorrow, I want it consistent, and if you find an anomaly, you need to grab me and let me know, because then I'm going to suggest that it comes into compliance. I, I don't have a number. You know, I'm leaning up here. Y'all pick a number. But where I'm going with this is, um, in the event that there is a desire to revisit something, what's noticed? Like our annual auditor, our annual the, the law firm. I mean, all those all those contract attorneys y'all had on there. Like, okay, if I want to revisit Stanco, like when did he become part of the list of the status quo? It, I'm like, <laughs> I had to giggle to myself. But like, look how this money move. Look how they re-break people into the ongoing. It's like, okay, I, you know, that's a, I know who that is, and I, I don't have a problem, but I'm just. I'm, I'm making my point uh, how, how the status quo gets expanded. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Who gets included? Uh -huh. All right, so uh, I'm going to come back to, you got my question. You don't have to answer it now. I want to lay this uh, down to where I'm going. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anybody else before I move on? We're going to. Uh, well, I guess just, just one minute here. Mm -hmm. So, can someone or is anybody able to? Yeah, but I we'll think have to pull that information. Check it. So, do we prepare to vote on this tomorrow, or do we prepare to wait and decide on what this looks like tomorrow? Okay. I mean, you can't wait. Mm -hmm. It's the last meeting. It's the last meeting of the year. 
Mm -hmm. There's a special call meeting yeah. if you don't make it through there. Mm -hmm. So tell us that it's the last meeting. Yeah, yeah. 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 I was just saying it was the last meeting. Mm -hmm. We can get this information today. Yeah, yeah. Here, here's going to be the difference okay. based on my, and okay. we'll make sure that's firm. Okay. The employees mm -hmm. that are employed on an annual basis, mm -hmm. employees that have certain merit system rights, almost all of those are identical for his historic purposes. So the list on well, what are they? Uh, the, the annual or eighteen months? Yeah, yeah they're they're annual. <laughs> annual. Okay. The, the, so the list on nineteen is different from twenty. Twenty's list are annual contribution list and the county attorney including my firm and the board of assessors attorneys and other those are not the same as employees those are vendors now on the list of 20 i guess you can put them in where you want to you have all the juvenile contracts those juvenile contracts were actually developed by judge peggy walker so those are different than all of the contracts those are completely different and what do you uh, mean by different i mean I, well when i say there she okay. she makes them She's got certain reporting requirements. Mm -hmm. she, they got to attend so many uh, of their hearings. and blah, It's a long list that's adopted by the juvenile council, blah, 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 and who they report to. <coughs> those were developed. Those contracts look different than everybody else's. So you really got three categories. You've got the employee contracts, and they should be all similar unless they were, there's something peculiar about them. That's 19. 20 you have the vendor agreements right and inside 20 you have the juvenile court all this list of juvenile court uh, contracts whenever we went from a budget where we were just simply paying per hour to contract work where they get a certain amount of caseload for a set fee and Peggy developed those contracts yeah, so, so so the question that Commissioner Robson answered all the contracts aren't the same because they serve different purposes Understood. all the employees contracts on 19 should be the same yeah. or very close unless for some reason when you're and I'll give you an example not to throw them out but let's say you were hiring McGill and he negotiated with y'all X then whatever you negotiated with him yeah. is in his contract got gotcha. gotcha. does that make sense yes it does so so with that is it any way possible, I guess that would be probably to you, Mark, to break out the categories? I, I can do that. Oh, okay, Jennifer. Easily. And what we're looking for is okay. term of each contract, just to make sure we're clear, mm -hmm. and the number of days notice that has to be given, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. So can we kind of break that out mm -hmm. and categorize it so we can kind of see it broken out and see sure. who falls where and why? You know, because if they negotiated that as can state it then that's what they negotiated and kind of that's what the contract entails however that doesn't mean that bringing it in compliance to what we want to be that we can't change it now at this particular time at, at this particular deal yeah. that if they so choose not to accept that then we'll you know cross that bridge when we get to so is that doable we can do all right okay i yield back and if any other discussion board commissioners okay at this time. One, one last thing how, how long would this be before because i my little pea brain needs it sooner than later. So what today? Um, it, today we we can do it today. As okay. soon as we get out of the executive session, I can start on it. Yeah. We'll shoot you an email to everybody. Is that all you want it or however you want it? Yeah, yeah. Also, the contracts are all in notebooks too. Right. I know this is that's in right. Mark's office, but I'm just trying to figure out kind of when we get this so we can kind of take a look at it. We'll get in it the next exactly. few hours. Mm -hmm. yeah, in the next few hours. Okay. All right. So we said notice. A notice will give a notice and the terms, terms of term. the term. And dollar. And dollar? Yeah. We'll just add those to the one we Yeah, you already got it. Just add the two deals. That's all. Just add the two dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. that, 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 that's mm -hmm. the one. Somewhere about the latter part of the day, this afternoon or something. As soon as we get done here, okay. you can start right. on it. Thank you very I'm much. <laughs> I yield back. Okay, thank you. Jennifer sort of put in a mm -hmm. spreadsheet yes, format for them. Okay, sounds good to me. Uh, any other comment for commissioners? Sounds like we all on the same page. Yeah. Okay, uh, County Attorney, do we uh, have uh, need to go into executive session? You do, Madam Chair, for uh, personnel, real estate, and legal. Okay, Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to go into executive session? Second. We have a motion and a second. Um, in the discussion, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please indicate by raising your right hand. Commissioner Mitchell. You say you Commissioner man? Mitchell, are you in favor? Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. five vote. Yes. Oh, um, <laughs> Yeah. Five of unanimous votes. Take ten minutes or five minutes.
Okay. Board of Commissioners, thank you so much for this meeting. This was our last work session of the year. Uh, you all have just been just wonderful and I appreciate your contribution. Uh, anything else come before this board? If nothing else is that comes before this board, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. All right. <laughs>